Hello, and welcome back to the Game Bat Match Podcast. I'm your host, Manny Friedman, along with my co-host. Brad Sloan. All right, back in the house, baby, for uh, round two and three recap and a round four preview. So uh, yeah. we're, we're excited. The um, tournament is, like, kind of kicking into high gear now, right, where the seeded players are. Well, we're more than halfway through, but we're getting to some of the, like, yeah. exciting, you know, like, seed-on-seed matchups, right, where you've got, like, good players going at it, you know, back half of round three and then round four, you get some really, really fun, fun matchups. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, what's the, our, our aces competition. I think I'm still ahead, but Manny's closing in. I am closing in um, right now. It is drum roll. Uh, 197 for Brad after day six. Uh, for me, I have 187 and Josh is done with 129 because all of his guys lost. <laughs> yeah yeah so well, it's it's looking yeah. honestly it's looking really good for you because you just have like you've got four i mean i have five left you have four but it's looking really good for you i think like you just have like you just have like the better players like i tomorrow i'm probably gonna lose well i'm gonna lose some guys tomorrow because two i'm gonna lose hubie tomorrow. tomorrow i'm probably gonna lose hubie um like it's well it's by blue and rublev so either way i lose one right. tomorrow with there you need so a I'm five probably, set match there what you need five sets. Yeah, yeah. I need well, I need as many aces as possible. Um, and then Medvedev. Yeah, that leaves me. Marvels. I mean, I got who else? Dimitrov, Medvedev. Well, oh, Dimitrov, right? I have Tiafo and you have Dimitrov. So that match and, and you're that, in- that could help me. Hey. If Dimitrov holds on to that lead, that could help me. Right. Um because then I'll only have Djokovic, Alcaraz, and Sinner remaining, right? And they're gonna get far. Like they're gonna you know. Oh, with their draws, yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't believe that Sinner's gotten here playing Sarundalo, <laughs> Schwartzman. The bad Sarundalo. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the weaker Sarundalo, Schwartzman. Hollies. Who? who? Oh, Hollies. He did play Hollies, but like Hollies is like a like, yeah, that could be a exactly. first round match. Like right. Hollies, who didn't really even like play on the grass warming up, and then. um and now Galan in the fourth round. It's just like incredible to me. Like, and then if he beats Galan, it's either Shapo or Safulin in the quarters, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's not like even if he beats Galan. I can't believe Shapo is going to make a quarter too. Like, uh, let that match deserves some discussion because I, no, I, no, I'm, 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 oh, he, he easily could. He's the favorite, right? He is a favorite. I actually looked at the line. He's a favorite there. I can't believe he's a favorite to make the quarterfinals, right? That's not a shoe in by any means, but he, he's a favorite. Right. Yeah, so I'm I'm in I'm in good shape, but like if Hubie if you know say Hubie has like 15, 20 aces against Novak, and then like Bublik and Rublev, they play five sets, right? And Bublik has like 30 aces and Rublik. Yeah, I mean I still have a shot, right? Because I could get, you know, like if I get I mean it's possible that I could extend my lead after round four to like 30, 40 aces. That's probably reasonable. And then if I have two or three guys in the quarters and you have three in the quarters, like maybe because your guys aren't like like your guys that are left aren't really, with the exception of Tiafo, ironically, like in my mind, aren't really high ace guys. They're yeah. like more like two or three aces per set kind of guys who like, yeah, they'll keep you'll keep like if I'm up by 20, like I'm done because you just have too many matches left to like generate aces. Right, right. But like if I can get like your guys aren't going to like put up 20, 25 aces a match. I mean, the hope is like, I'm down by like 15 by the final and it's Alcaraz versus Djokovic. And then like they each have like 10 aces. You know, that's not that's, like, but if, if it's 15 going to the final, that's not a shilling. Like, it's not, I'll, I'll be nervous, but like, yeah, whatever I get in that match is going to be, you know, whatever I get in the Djokovic center semi, right. I won't be able to respond to right. I get it. Like that's why my team really needs to build up like a a bigger lead. But um, yeah. but yeah, I was hoping Alcaraz uh, Yari would go five today because like you know it went, I mean you got four long sets there. I don't think there's yeah. really too much. Yeah, they got forty three games in that match. That's pretty good. I know. Yeah, true. All um, right, so let's. So I guess uh, kind of starting there. So obviously top top you know section of that draw. Um, <clears throat> With, uh, the guys who made it through to the fourth round are Alcaraz and Berrettini. Mm-hmm. Uh, Berrettini beat so a couple of things. So I had the Watanuki money line and Watanuki versus Zverev at like five to one. Uh, Watanuki just ran out of gas and like you know Zverev just kind of outweighted them. 
Uh, but what Watanuki did take a set. I was disappointed because I also had the Watanuki with the games, and he mm-hmm. got two and two in the last two sets. I was getting like six and a half or something, or six, I think. So it's kind of disappointing because sets, which I got wrong too. So it, it sucked because like we kind of both called the matches like somewhat accurately, but like, yeah, it, we both yeah had... yeah we both had like we both got like a piece but got no piece right. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah, Yari. I mean, Nico Yari beat Kubler, and then he took a set off of Alcaraz today. Um, but like, yeah, it, it's just really tough for Yari to beat Alcaraz. Like, he just doesn't have enough game. It like, is, but like the first two sets, if you look at it, like I believe, like Yari kind of outplayed Alcaraz for for a lot of it. Like, there were a lot of Alcaraz service games which got to Deuce. Um, believe it or not, and like he really had to fight for this match. From start to finish. I mean, I think it was like over three and a half hours, right? So yeah, three. yeah. And uh so. and for two sets, you're right. I mean, for two sets, Yari was the better player. Um, absolutely. Even he though it's six three, six, the, seven, like like Alcaraz got the one break in the first, and then the second there, were, there was a tie break, but Yari was, you know, probably slightly better played a little bit better. Um but then I mean, I just don't think Yari like the question is like, how long can he keep that up for when he plays Alcaraz? You know, because it's just like he's got to go so big the whole time. It's just, I think it's tiring for him. I, I, I honestly thought he kept the level very high for for most of that match. Um, yeah, I mean the second set here. Yeah, Yari won four more points, forty eight to forty four. Um, and then yeah, the third and the fourth, where Alcaraz kind of took over and eventually kind of won. But that. even the fourth, it was like Alcaraz only won four more points in the entire set. Yeah, I wasn't on that at all. Were you? I had the uh, I had the over. It was thirty four. Yeah, you see Yari win a set. Yeah, like yeah, because you can hit that even if uh, if if Yari doesn't win a set. Yeah, if you get two two seven five sets. Yeah, yeah. Even like six three seven five seven six, you hit that at thirty three. Yeah, that was that was probably a miss by me. I probably should have been on that too. I mean, not just in retrospect, but probably like even like you know, I probably just yeah, I I don't think I looked that hard enough. That's probably on me. I mean, there's one Um, one thing for sure. I'm not laying games with Alcaraz anymore on grass. Um, he's going to play a lot of close sets because I think you know he's he's a physical beast, right? But like the biggest weakness in his game is the return of serve, for sure. Um, and I think like it took him some time to really adjust to like a true kind of serve bot today. Um, like it's hard on grass and I, I don't think he expected that because like, if you look at Queens, right, he didn't really play any serve bots. He played render neck. I don't really. Not a serve bot. His no. serve is that great. Right. And then he played like Demonor, Dimitrov, Korda. No, but I think this is like no. a thing, right? Like, um, this is surprising too. I haven't heard a whole lot. I, I'm not very good at like listening to this and understanding this. Like, I hear constantly it's slow, it's slow, it's slow. But like the serve bots have done really well this week. Um. Well, I you know I I think Yari is honestly having a very good season. He's confident. He's he's actually playing well. Like, just besides the serve, I I think it's a little bit underrated in terms of. How he's playing. He's obviously playing better than he was previously. Uh, I mean, well might be a stretch. Like Kubler, Kubler was a disaster in that second round match. He beat Chechenato in the that. first. I know the guys on the Discord were all over that, so I was kind of like yeah. following what they were talking about. Um, Chechenato is not like a grass court guy. Yeah, I mean, he hadn't won a set on grass in like five years. Like, so I don't know how much I am on like the the Yari being this great, like this new guy train, like. But I feel like he's a guy that kind of rises to the occasion. Like there, there've been multiple big matches this year where he's played pretty well, like even against rude and, um, and at the French, like that was a really, really tight three setter that could have gone either way. You know, like he's rose risen to the occasion in the Santiago um, final. Right. When that, which was a big match for him, maybe not a big match in terms of like, the tennis landscape but for him it was um he also played extra he, he beat uh sissy pass in uh holly which was a big match against a top player right so i think i think he like kind of rises to the occasion because like 
I bet if he played the way he played today against like Kubler or uh, Chekinado, that those those matches are not close. It's an interesting take. It's an interesting take. Like he seems to play like these some of these better guys better in general, right? Like he seems to play Rude pretty well. He beat Rude in Geneva, right? He did, yeah. Um, which is obviously like his altitude, so it's better for him. He's kind of a he's like that's his best. Like that's right. the best place he can play is in play altitude. Um, but he beat Rude in Geneva. He's played Alcaraz tough now twice. Um, he's, but it also might be like a, it might be a function of having such a big serve game that like, you know, like if you have a big serve game, you can compete with anyone, right? Because like if you're just hitting like, you know, if you're serving really well you and like hitting good forehands, you can compete with anyone. Um, also the flip side is true, right? Where if you miss a few, you can be in real trouble because his return game. Yeah, I mean, to, me, to me, he's kind of like the the new version of Isner. That's how I kind of like view Yari, like a mentally tough kind of like guy who plays big matches well and just, you know, he, he's not a guy you want to see in your draw. In, in, in but he's not, I mean, but like, but nobody's been like, well, actually guys have been, but like, he's not in the Isner Karlovich range, I would say. Like, he's actually a much better tennis player than those guys. He is, but that, that's, he's like, that's what I'm saying. He's a modern day Isner. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the best way to describe him. I think, that's, I think that's pretty pretty good because he's like yeah. I, I just wanted to point out that he's like like Isner even in his prime was like a pretty true bot like he didn't really do mm-hmm. much else that well like I think Yari's game besides that is much more developed than Isner's yeah, game. Isner's is like, better than Yari's, but like Yari's yeah. the rest of his game is better. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, but, um, I mean, it, it, I for that though for for Alvarez. like I'm I'm not like down on him for making that a tight four setter like he got through it and i, I think he'll be fine you know that's yeah i'm not down on Al- i mean i i'm slightly down on alcaraz actually but i'm not like not because of that match but just like he hasn't looked like yeah, he hasn't looked great that's you know true. what i mean like he's like so i guess here's the thing right it's like i still think he's the second best guy in the draw on grass but like the the gap between two in the field I think is much closer than one and two. Um, like even when Djokovic doesn't look great, like he just he still feels so much more unbeatable than like. I Alvarez. think the gap between one and two is pretty big, but I also think the gap between two and three is like the same size. It, it's pretty big too. To and I guess I guess part of that too is like who who are we even calling three at this point? Like the fact that like. The fact that you could make a legitimate case that Berrettini is three, and I don't, I don't think he is, and I'll go, I'll go with the case against Berrettini probably at some point on this pod, but, um, but the fact that like you could almost make that argument is amazing. It's it's terrible. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, like, I there's just no other player, right? Like if like say if Dimitra pulls it out against Tiafo. I mean, Alcaraz is is bas- basically a shoe in the semis, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, like I think Berrettini is a tougher opponent than than either Dimitrov or Rune, right? I actually think if Tiafo gets there, probably a little tougher. You know? I think Tiafo is the toughest apart. Like if Tiafo gets through that, like if Tiafo gets is able to somehow come back from two sets down against Dimitrov tomorrow, I think that's the toughest opponent for Alcaraz because like Tiafo, the quick courts don't hurt him. Um, he can. I'll hurt him he's today. Got, what? Heard him today against. I didn't really see any of it. He got, dis- I mean, two and three in the first two sets. But like, yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, maybe so, like, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't look good for him. But he does get like he does get the the night to go home and like, you know, maybe sleep it off and maybe he's better tomorrow. I heard. Uh, I saw some highlights. Mitra was like on fire. Like he played really, really well. Okay. So I don't know, but. I mean, Dimitrov could choke that match. Like, he could come out tomorrow really well, I don't think he needs to choke it, right? Like, he could just lose. Like, Tiafo could just play three better sets of tennis, right? Like, I'm not saying it's likely, but, like, what was – I mean, I, I don't remember. and I don't. It's know plus 650 it now, and I I hit I doubled down on it. I hit it again. No, so I get you on that. I'm not, that's a, That wasn't my question. Pre-match, what would have – what would Tiafo have been to straight set? Maybe something like, like 400 or something, plus 350, plus 400, oh, something like that? Say, yeah. Yeah. So like it's not unreasonable. Like you're all you're asking for now is a 3-0 win, right? Tomorrow. It's not unreasonable that that Tiafo pull like he doesn't necessarily need like a massive choke from Dimitrov. It could just be like 
Tiafo comes out and plays better, and Dimitrov doesn't play as well. Like, right, right, that could happen. Which happens with Dimitrov all the time. Like, yeah, yeah, he can play amazing, like you know, like Federer s tennis one day, and then just come out and lay a complete dud. The next yeah. Time. So I mean, yeah, yeah. Tiafo. So a guy, a guy I was way off on. Uh, trans- we we kind of started transition to then we stopped. Mm-hmm. Uh, Berrettini, Berrettini straight set a demon or and he beats Zverev today. I was on the wrong end. I was on the Zverev end of that, which was uh, honestly like this is where I'm gonna go with this. Like he's doing really well on the serve and forehand, Berrettini, but like the the movement is worse than it even was back when he was playing two to three years ago. Like it's it's amazing how like he's won two matches now where he's won less, like, a quarter of his points on return. Like, he's basically a serve bot. He's a serve bot with a forehand. So this is what, why I always, like, like Berrettini, it, you know, in the past, not, not too much this year, but, you know, uh, going to years past, is I love the way that he masks his weaknesses. I think he does an excellent job of that. Because he has such blatant holes, but he masks them really well. That's so like fine. Opponents think that like there are spots on the court which are attackable, but like I think his tactics are pretty good where he like uses that backhand slice and waits for a forehand. Like he he does he's he's quite a patient player actually, and I I I like the way he plays tennis. I agree with all that. Mm-hmm. He won t- under he won like a quarter of his return points in two of his three matches that he's won. I'm not saying like, he's a good returner. I'm just. I, I'm also no, saying, I'm saying, like it's really yeah. hard to win tennis matches that way. Like it's really hard to win tennis matches when you can't break serve. He generated one break today on Zverev. He generated what was it one or two against Sine- I guess in the fourth he generated a couple against Sinego, but like he basically wasn't winning a point on serve like off serve up until like the fourth set against Sinego. Like it was, it was um. Well, yeah. I think we have to transition then to talking about Zverev because, like, I we I talked about this a little bit on the uh, Discord with with MP9. Like, I think Zverev is a very mentally weak player, and like we talked about it before with the two types of mentally weak. There's that like battler type and a um a guy that kind of rises to the occasion, right? Mentally, like mental strength wise, right? Yeah, I honestly think he's weak in both aspects. Um, um, so I guess I, I'm going to disagree there. Like, I think it's tough with Zverev because like, I think he's a decent battler. He's also like all over the place. Right. So like, uh, what was it bad? Like there, there's been plenty of instances where he's played top guys really tough and showed a lot of mental strength. Um, there's obviously the, the tour finals he won, but then there's the U S open match against Djokovic. Like there's plenty of instances where he's come out and played like really tough, really well against top guys mm-hmm. and then there's times when the man- mental gap has been massive especially on clutch points right like like the french against nadal right where it was just like the, it was just like a complete so like he to me i would i would put him in like a different category like i think his battling is actually pretty good like it's i'd say it's probably above average to well above average um i think the the like being clutch is like it's so hard it's like it's 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 probably overall a negative but like it's it's um like there's times when he's shown it though like when like he he didn't win that that match against Djokovic at the the US Open he battled that match I'll, I'll give you that but he didn't win no, but like his his tiebreak. So this this was surprising me. His tiebreak record, his career tiebreak record is sixty percent, which is pretty darn good for a guy with that many tiebreaks. He wins, um, and he do- and he wins tiebreaks against like the top guys basically as well as he does against guys not at the top. Like it's fifty eight percent against not, not guys. Not all the top tiebreaks 20. are created equal, right? Like the like, tiebreaks are are important, and, but they're but they're a good. Me- like, if you're looking for a, stat- a statistical measure, like something to, like kind of quantify or back up that comment like that would be a place to start right okay okay that's that that's um, i like, feel like he wins tie breaks he should win like he won one against i think echeverry at the french well that's that's why i looked you up know? the um that's why i looked up the record against like top 
20 guys on tie breaks. I, I, yeah. That was my initial thought. Like my, like to my eye, Manny, I agree with you. Yeah. But then like, he actually does pretty well in tie breaks against like, you know, like good players. Which I was surprised. Two against Tiafo at the French. I'll give you that one. He didn't win one. He did not play one against Etch. Um, he didn't play any in Halle. He lost one to Yari in Geneva. Well, I'm just I'm just looking at like so I was just looking at like career like career. If you just look at career record in tie breaks. Mm hmm. Against top 20 guys. He's 57%, 43 and 33. That's really good. I mean. But like this year, you remember that Medvedev match against Zverev, uh, the Medvedev Zverev match in Monte Carlo? Remember? Well, that's why it's so weird. There's just like so many in Dell because I I agree with like, like like from the mind's eye perspective. Yeah, there's so many times when it's just been like it feels like the eye test doesn't match with that statistic. It feels like the eye test doesn't match with the statistics, like on this in general. Like his so again, another interesting thing like so in deciding sets against top twenty guys, he's twenty nine and thirty three. Which like isn't bad, but it's not terrible. Like against top twenty guys, which is which is you know really good players, right? Like that's a decent mm -hmm. record. So like, it's not like like by any like quantitative measure, he doesn't have this history of being that terrible. But like, but to, to the mind's eye, like I get your point because like I seem for whatever reason we seem to like remember more of the like the bad than the good. I mean, I, I another clear memory I have is that that U.S. Open final when he was down two sets. To, he was. Up well, I think that's the problem. I, I think that's the real issue. Is like that's the indelible mark right now on his career, and I think that's the issue. And I think like it, it like leads you. And I'm not saying like I'm not meaning necessarily you, Manny. I mean, I'm saying like a, yeah. as a general fan, like a, like a general analyst, like that's such an indelible mark when you lose, and especially losing it the way he did, like the way that like that fist that was so ugly, like the way the way that was that was. The way, I mean, honestly, both players were trying to choke, and the way that you know, like the way Zverev ultimately choked, like was was like you have a couple of those, and it leaves such an indelible mark. And then, like the loss to Medvedev when he's like complaining afterwards about Medvedev being unfair, like he's just had like a few of these like moments that are just like they, you know, they're, they're they're the only way to describe them is like mentally weak. And you have a few of those, the match against Nadal, like he's had a few of them, like where it's just yeah. so bad. And then, like, it just leaves such a bad mark. It's, like, almost hard to erase it, like, no matter what good you do, right? But, see, that's that's fine. Like, he had chances to win those matches. But, like, I, I also look at, the like, the rude match with the French Open. Like, you lost, like, 2-3 in love in a semifinal. Like, there's just no excuse for that, you know? Like, you got to dig in. And th this is what I mean by his, like, weak battling. I guess it's the question there, so I guess, yeah, because he has a few matches like that. I he doesn't necessarily part, just just go away. But is that is that part of the diabetic thing though? Yeah, but I'm I'm not. I mean, he is diabetic, right? So uh, that doesn't like diminish how quote unquote mentally weak. If that's part of him as a tennis player, we have to weigh that into account. But I guess that would be different than being mentally weak, right? Like if you if you don't have okay, enough like, blood sugar to, to have energy to play properly, that's different than having. If you want to define it differently, that's fine. But we're looking at how to handicap his matches, right? So right. So yeah, you have, I, 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 not, I get your point. That's fine. I get your point there. That's no. fine. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting that he. Um, I just think it's interesting because I have the same like I have the same memories, Manny, as you. But mm -hmm. I was like, let me quantify this and look this up, and like, you look that's it up, and like it's it's the stats aren't that bad. And you're like, they're actually probably pretty good. Like the five set record isn't amazing, especially given how fit he is. I would have thought that like, they would have been a little better, but it's not terrible. Um, and the tiebreak record is like, damn good. Like 57% is really good. And we talk about all the time how tiebreaks are basically coin flips. 
I, I feel like also he, he has this like spoiled brat kind of. Uh, well, I think that's the problem. Guy. I think that's why you think of him as mentally weak is because yeah. like the attitude, like at times the attitude is so bad. Right. That like. It's the like, body like, language. Like he stays on the court and still like. Yeah, there's like the, there's a racket issue like, in Acapulco, right? Like there's, there's so many issues yeah. when he like smacked the chair. Like there's just like these marks that are like so bad. Like, like there's the occasional F minus mark. Yeah. And it's just like so bad. And it's like, no matter what good you do, like how can you overcome that? Right. And once there's four or five of them, it's like, it's like, you know what? I mean, we just listed like five or six really, really mentally bad Zverev moments. And like, when you have that, like it gets really hard to overcome after. It does. Now. So um, do you view Berrettini as being a mentally tough player? I'm curious to see what you say because, like, uh, yeah. So, I mean, in terms of like, said it no. feels like so again. So, I actually looked this up. Like, his tiebreak record is about fifty five percent, so it's actually pretty good. Um, I think of him as a pretty like clutch player. Um, battling with him seems to be up and down too. To be honest, right? Like, there's a few matches this year where he just like didn't bother showing up. There's been a few in the past where he just like has gotten you know whipped. But was um, that Sonigo one in uh, Stuttgart? Was that yeah, a, two and uh, one? Like yeah, but was that a injury based two and one? Could have been. That, uh... Could have been. You know what I mean? You probably probably was, but like, I don't know, man. Like, there's the one against Room where I guess he was hurt, where he got where he got beat six zero one zero. That was the I Acapulco guess he was hurt. One. What? That was a weird one because like there was a rain delay and then he came back for one game and then retired, right? That was a Yeah, weird... like Yeah. So like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's um I don't know. I just like look at also his, you know, four straight slam quarterfinals that he had a couple of years ago. Like that was impressive. Well, Granted... that's that's the thing, right? Is like and I think that's like because like you look at a guy like Zverev and you look at a guy like Veratini, right? And like, mm-hmm. you know, like Obviously, Zverev's done it for a longer period of time, but Berrettini's, I guess you want to call it peak, like that year or two peak, and, and I don't know if he's still in or not because of the injury, so not, not, he's not there anymore, but that year or two peak was, like, really impressive, mm-hmm. right? Um, well, I feel that Berrettini overachieves and Zverev underachieves. And, that's and, and I guess that's, that's what it feels like, right? When you're watching, it's like Berrettini's got the yeah. serve and nothing, and, like... Zverev has a world class backhand. I mean, he's probably more athletic. I think he has a better. I think he has actually a better first serve. Berrettini has a way better second serve. But I also. But again, like the second serve going completely awry for Zverev in moments too. Right? That's another right. sign of like mental weakness. Exactly having having double fault yips is is a mental weakness kind of. Right. It's like the like, again. This is the problem. Like so. I like this is why I I, I can't figure it out because like sometimes it's good with Zverev, but like. So often, there's like so many like, but like, it's one of those things where I feel like with mental toughness, like you almost, you almost, like, it's almost like with mental toughness, the way we grade guys might not be accurate because I feel like we grade guys on like how many F minus mentally tough moments do you have, as opposed to grading guys like on how many positive mo- mental toughness moments you have. All right. Well, going forward, when I watch Vera matches, I'm going to count uh, met like matches where he shows some mental toughness i, I bet i'm gonna struggle to find like five for the rest of the but that can that can be biased though too right like it's 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 because it's so hard to define well, right? i'll, I'll can... try my best to not be biased all right all right we'll discuss it on the pod going forward all right. if i'm biased right. then you can call me out on it all right perfect all right? I'll, I'll check you on that but yeah i mean okay. i no i mean i uh <laughs> I, with, I guess like the there's been moments of Berrettini. There's there was the match against Murray in the Australian, right, where he had like that ease that that pass to win the match, and he kind of choked that. So like, Berrettini's made it's like, true. you know, I mean, he's had his he's had like nobody's perfect in this regard, right? Like it's it's um, I give Berrettini a little bit more of a pass there because he was he was down two sets and came back to force a fifth in that in that Murray match. Yeah, yeah, so slightly more of a pass there. Like I can't remember the last time Zverev came back from a two set to love lead down. Yeah, it's probably Karina Busta in that U.S. Open, that COVID U.S. Open. Yeah, I know. Or he was a massive favorite. Right. Um. So, all right, yeah. let's move on to. Uh... I guess the one thing I want to say about Berrettini is like, I don't know, man. Like, 
it's amazing to see a guy get through who can't win points on return. Like Zverev lost three points on serve. I saw somebody posted Zverev lost three points on serve in the third set and he lost the set. Yeah. Um, which is just like incredible. And um, one was in the tie break, right? Yeah, which I thought he lost more than that in the third set. In the third set tie, I thought he lost. I thought he lost a bunch. Um, I'm looking it up now. But yeah, Berrettini won 25 percent of return points against Sinego. He won like 38 against Demonor. Um, yeah, he broke in each set against Demonor. I called yeah. that match totally wrong. I had the minus one and a half sets there. Um. I was playing the Berrettini fatigue slash injury angle and the Demonur rally tolerance angle. And that just like, wasn't the case, like the firepower edge and just like, it was the second set. It was the problems. second set where Zverev lost three points on serve. Wow. But but here's the thing coming back to Zverev though, right? Like that's fine. Zverev won six points on return in that, in that second set. That's not acceptable either. No, right. I posted totally that in the discord. Like, Right. Like, like, did, like, Zverev was the better player, I thought, in that match. Like, he got broken once, but, it, like, he, I thought, he, like, for the most part, he was the better player. But, like, he, but, like, you have to figure out a way to generate, like, that's fine that you lost, you won 80% of points on serve and lost a match. Like, you can kind of bitch about that, but you can't really bitch about that when, you can, when you're only able to generate 20, win 25% of it's, points it's on your own. Bad. Yeah. But it's, um, but it, but, like, that, this, I guess, what I'm going back to Berrettini is like, Give Berrettini credit. He's winning 75% of points on his serve. Right? It, so like that's where he, he's almost down to Berrettini being point. more opportunistic. Right? And in key moments, Berrettini is the better player, which which boils down to the fact that Berrettini is a t- slightly stronger ment- s- stronger mentally. Maybe. You're just looking at a very small sample, right? Like you're looking you're looking out at three points and saying you're okay, three but or yeah, in this match, like t- tennis, a lot of tennis is about being opportunistic especially when there's very slim margins, right? Well, this, But this is interesting because, like, this is fascinating because I looked this up because I'm kind of curious about this. So and I'll, I'll go back and look it up again so I don't get it wrong. But who are the top five players this year in breakpoint, with, you know, top five players this year in breakpoint conversion percentage? All right, let me try to guess these. Um, I would have to say Djokovic is there. He's got to be there. No? Keep going. Okay. Um, It's definitely not Sinner. It's definitely not Holger Rune. Actually, Rune might be there. Let me just get a list of the top guys. Um, Medvedev is probably there. I would guess Rublev is there. Fritz, I he's probably way down on that list. I, I would be very surprised. Uh, Hubie is definitely out of there. I think Sarundolo actually might be on that list. Uh, how am I doing? I'll give you the top five. He's gone through ten names already. What top five? You looked it up? No, I didn't look it up. Top five. Medvedev is number one. Okay, makes sense. JJ Wolf is number two. Okay. Jan Leonard Struff is number three. Wow. Manorino's number four. Alcaraz is number five. So my point with this is like, a lot of times for these guys, it's not sustainable. Like, it's not like Struff is this guy who through his career has been like this great breakpoint player. Right? It's just happened to be that he's playing breakpoints better the past couple months, and he's risen because of that. Okay. But like, there's no reason to believe that he's going to like keep doing this. Manorino's the same thing. Like, Manorino never in his life has been generate has been winning 48% of break points. Right? So it's it's just like it's it's kind of a it's kind of a it's 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 really kind of a blip. And so when you look at opportunistic, like I agree with you in terms of like just like determining what happened in a match. Yes, I agree. In an individual match, yes, like that's what tennis comes down to. Especially on in these matches where like guys aren't winning enough points on return in general to like get more than one or two break opportunities. The problem is, like, it's very easy for a guy to go on a run where for a few weeks he's amazing at being opportunistic, and then that's it. 
right? And then to me, it's just not it's not sustainable. Whereas, not sustainable. and this is where it's interesting, right? So on the flip side, the top five guys this year in return points one percentage: Alcaraz, Djokovic, Medvedev, Sinner, Sarundalo. Right. So all guys who like that's that, that that was basically the list of guys that you named. Right. Right. You go to 22 top five guys in return points, one percentage Alcaraz, Djokovic, Demonor, Sarundalo, RBA, Sinner was, you know, sixth barely. He was within 0.1% of points. So basically tied for fifth. So like you see, there's a little more like, like if you're good on return, you're good on return. And like, you can consistently do yeah, that. Sinner doesn't actually doesn't strike me as a guy who's opportunistic. Like he he misses a lot on break points. His break point uh, conversion must be pretty low. I mean, he he was in 2022, he was 12th on the tour in break point percentage, break point conversion percentage. What about this year? Uh this year he is. Eighth. Oh, okay. The point is like it's it's like it's a lot more random though. Okay. It's a lot more random. 2022 yeah. top five great point conversion percentage guys were Barre or not Barre, uh Muzetti, Zverev, Nori, Demonor, Kyrios. So it's like it's a little bit random and you have to be a little careful in grading it too much, especially as you handicap matches, because it's much more like flighting. Mm -hmm. Fleeting, whatever the word is. Well, I stayed away from that Berrettini's Vera match, period. Because yeah, I, I was on Zverev. And like I said, like, I don't, I yeah. guess, like. I had no read on it. I was looking at all the lines. I, I thought it was pretty well set, to be honest. Like, I, I would have made Zverev a, a slight favorite. And then, like. I was expecting tie breaks too, so that over under was like not great either. I um, thought Zverev would, would generate more than one break point. I was I'm genuinely disappointed in like I mean I'm like I get it. it there's sets. what I'm surprised it was straight sets. Well, but again, it's like it's it's straight sets fine, but it's like super tight. Yeah, I mean one break like, but right. again, like this is why I posted in the Discord like Zverev has nothing to complain about. Like you have to be able like if you can't generate break points, then like you're basically playing coin flips. Right, right. You know, like you, like you, you know, if you're there, you have to like, you have to find a way to win some points on return as well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, Berrettini made seventy percent of first serves. That's great, that is but great. it's not like, like it's great, but it's not like, yeah. it's not like that means Zverev made eighty percent. This is a serve dominated match. So, all right, right. Let's, let's move on. We can move on. Yeah. Uh, so let's um, talk. Let's talk about this Fokina rune match. <laughs> the underarm serve. That is a legendary uh, moment. serve. They ate all in the, in the fifth. That serve. is a legendary moment. But Foki blew six. He, Foki had break had match points at five four. He had two match points on rune serve. He had six two in the breaker. So it's not even just that. It was just a complete like, and another Foki choke job. So we call this match perfectly, right? We had the over 38 and a half, which I was surprised it was that low. I thought it should have been like 41. I thought so, honest. too. I thought they were way off on this. They were I thought, way off on I actually this. was really surprised that there weren't any other close sets, the way these guys love to, like, especially Foki. Like, I'm, I'm amazed that Foki won two sets without going to 7-5 because that's something that he right. he's rarely able to actually execute. Um, yeah, I mean, it was – I also played the over seven and a half breaks – there were there were actually only eight breaks in that set because there were no breaks in the fifth, but um, you know, still I thought that that line should have probably been like nine or ten. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's these guys played a similar match in Madrid that Folky won, right? But it was it was also the same kind of just back and forth, just head scratcher of a match. <laughs> You know, like, I feel like if these well, guys... It's just Foki's tactics, man. Like, his yeah. tactics on, like, big points are just terrible. 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 Like, that underarm serve defines it, right? Like, yeah. like it's just, like, his ta like he's actually, like, he used to just be tactically terrible. I feel like he's getting better. But then once, it, once it's a big point, he just regresses completely, like, whatever That's it was, like, a year exactly. or two ago. You know, That's like... Crazy. Yeah, I know. 
It's and it's insane. actually like sad because like I don't know, like I like Folky. Like you he's know, he tries hard. He's I mean, a fun I, game I think to he watch. Has, he just like he has top ten talent for sure. Yeah. For sure. In terms of ball striking, I mean, it, it, incredible, great athlete, explosive. I mean, he has all the shots. It's just the tactics are just awful. And well, it's like, like they've kind of gotten better on like not important points. Yeah. <laughs> and then once it's an important point, they like regress back to like free folky just bombing. But like, like he goes into like Shapel. Like it's not it's not really Shapel. It's just like bad tactics. And I, like, I think like when he goes ahead, he he like relaxes that ten percent, and it just like. But I don't like think it's, I don't, I, don't, I disagree. I don't think he relaxes. He just like. He just why like is it always when he's at he's ahead that happens, and when he's behind, I think he gets he nervous. He gets nervous when he's he gets. I think he gets nervous, like because you see the tactics start getting dumb, right? Like it's not like he's like not. It's not like he like stops trying. Like the tactics just get terrible. Like all of a sudden he starts like there'll be an open court. And he'll like hit the ball and there'll be like a wide open court. Like sometimes you gotta go back behind the guy, I get it, but like there'll be a wide open court and he'll hit it like right back to the guy. Right? He'll get like you I think he just gets like nervous and like doesn't manage it well. Or he'll try like a drop shot from like 20 feet behind the baseline. Yeah. Out of nowhere, right? And it's like yeah. someone will drop shot and he'll try this like ridiculous redrop, like that happens sometimes. It it's it's really alarming. I mean, I I don't know how much it happened in this match. Uh, I was at a wedding. I didn't see too much of it, but like, uh, I know it happened once or twice where he was up a break and then got broken right back. Yeah. Like it happened a couple of times, like, which is a folky, but it's the folky button. I, I wasn't, I wasn't able to see any of those. Cause I didn't yeah. get home until the fifth set, but like, yeah, it's the folky button. Like as soon as he breaks back, like, no, honestly, like this is how you make money gambling. You wait for Fuki, a break in a folky match. You immediately go online. You go to the live betting. You find the next game. You, you whoever needs to break, you click the button next to that break. It's always plus money. This is like plus two thirty, plus, plus three hundred. I don't think the books really caught caught on to it. No, the folky button. I like it. <laughs> yeah, and then you click place bet. You just wait about five ten minutes. Boom, money in the bank. <laughs> the folky button. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I hammered this match and it was just over galore. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. But yeah, we, I mean, we were all over this. This was our play of the day, our GBM play of the day. So it was, it was fun to see that come in. And then the previous, um, the previous rounds with, uh, with these guys, uh, I bet the minus uh, three and a half against VDZ. It cashed, but it was a sweat. Uh, I, I think you stayed away, right? Oh no! I was on I was on RB, RCB in the second round to win a set, um, and I stayed away off of v, VDZ completely. I had no interest in that VDZ okay. match. Yeah, well, VDZ tends to go away, like period. Like at least uh, Fokina battles VDZ, just like yeah, just throws in these complete duds and just like yeah, goes away. So I did have the Dimitrov three zero over Ovashka. I guess that's not a good thing. We're not talking about that anymore. Um, yeah. I guess, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, on to they... uh the Medvedev section. So okay. Medvedev 3 0 Manorino. I was not on that. I had I had Medvedev to win, but I had all these like weird over bets. Um, like Medvedev in five, Medvedev in over 40 games. Um, so I, I had a, I think I had something else, but like yeah, but basically so I had the over bet that, that did hit. Um I guess it didn't matter. Yeah, it was the break. So it was over six and a half. That was a great that was a great bet, and that was a great line you found. That was a pretty yeah. Yeah. It was plus money too, which was surprising. Yeah, and it didn't matter that it was straight sets; like it still hit, which is crazy. We so. both had on Fusevitz minus a set and a half. We didn't have to wait yeah. that much juice to do it. I feel like it was like minus one thirty or minus one forty, maybe minus one twenty. Oh, was it that low? It might have been that low. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we had yeah, I was sweat. really surprised. That, like that was. I mean, Fusevitz is a pretty good grass player, man. Yes, yes. Like. Uh, Medvedev beat him today, I think, which wasn't a great style match for Fusevitz, but I mean, they the set that line that perfectly. They set I stayed perfect. away from that. Five, Did you hit five. that? I hit the minus five. So oh, so you pushed. pushed. I pushed. So I, I yeah, I, I thought the line was set perfectly. So I, I had the it. five and a half actually at even money in a single bet, and then I had a five in a parlay. So but I you still missed the single bet, and you in the parlay pushed. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, they set that perfectly. I mean, Fusevic, the thing with him is like he's a good 
grass court player and stuff, but he's so bad against top 10 guys. Like he, I think he's he like, doesn't have that much game. I think it's just like, it's a, he's three he's and like a, seven he, for his career against top 10 guys. Well, I, I see him kind of like, I see demon or demon like quicker and stuff, but like, they just don't have them. They just don't have like weapons, man. It's really hard to beat these top guys. If you don't have weapons. That's true. It's true. Because, like, these top guys, like, the reason they're top guys is, like, they don't make mistakes. They don't make dumb mistakes. They put away balls, like. But then again, does does Medvedev really have weapons, too? Or he's just, like, so amazing at what he does that it's just, like, it doesn't matter. I think he it's more a ton of aces lot. today, but the serve is a weapon. Okay. Um, okay. Oop, the, oop. Passing, oop. the passing shots are good. Do we need to take a timeout? No. Nope. All right. All right. Sorry. Sorry for a little technical glitch there, uh, but we're back. All right. So uh, what, what were you saying about? Uh... It's, like, it's really hard if you don't have weapons to beat these top guys. Like, yeah. you know, it's just like, yeah, it's just it's just really. And like we we're talking about does Medvedev have, have weapons and like. I guess not really, but like. He's really he's really good passing shots, Medvedev. And he's amazing. Like his like ability to make balls in tough positions is amazing. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, so I think like that's the problem. That, like you just can't like you can't like you can't just play standard points and put Medvedev away. It just doesn't work that way. No. That's what Sinner has problems with, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Um All right. Uh next we got the Lexus Sarundolo line completely wrong. Yeah, uh, and then my was point. just gassed, completely yeah. gassed. That's what it boiled down to there. Um, and then Tommy Paul, man, did we talk about this in the last pod? I don't think we did because this is just no, so... we didn't. We we hit this on the last pod that that Paul minus one and a half sets, which which came through, but like, was it really unnecessary unnecess- that we had to sweat that out like the way we did? Like, yeah, really, yeah. Like, could we have saved those years off our life? Like. Wayne well, would have saved me a unit made up on betting Brownish at 14 to one in the fifth set down five, four to break back and win the set, like in the fourth <laughs> set. So like, um, which had, a, I mean, had an a, debate with Tibbets about whether or not that was a dumb bet. I don't know. Like 14 to one is pretty, it, that's, that's pretty tasty. Like at five to one, no way. And like, I understand that Brownish was like stumbling around the court and didn't look like he was like able to move at that point. But like, yeah. man, the way Tommy Paul loves to choke away sets and matches, like, it was like, I don't know, it's really hard for me to ever avoid double digits on a Tommy Paul choke. Because he's just like, he just loves, I mean, you're right, like he just loves to choke away matches. I mean, and that third set choke job was like of epic proportions. It that was, was epic. That was, it was epic. epic. I think it was like he had, what, 5, 3, 40, 15 or something. And then yeah. 4, 5, he had another two set points and he couldn't yeah. convert there. And then he had like a mini break or double mini break in the tie break. I think he had one minute break in the tie break. Yeah, but it was against Roundish, a guy who like all he can do is serve at this point. Exactly. And he's he's like, I think I think Roundish, he's he's considering retirement, it sounded like. Somebody asked him about it, and he was like, I'm not sure. But that was interesting. Like, he may this might be it for him. I mean, I imagine he'd probably retired in Toronto, but mm-hmm. I don't know. But like he may be he may be looking at retirement. Um well, I think actually probably like um, grass is probably the only surface he can play on because like it's it's actually better on the joints. Like I don't think he's capable of playing on hard court. That might be true. Hard that may be is, true. Like, way tougher on the joints. Yeah, although I thought he had more shoulders and like upper body problems than lower, but I could be a hundred percent wrong. I mean, he he was stumbling around on the like legs. His whole body was just like frail as hell. Yeah, like he just looks super awkward on the court. He does now look super no. awkward on the court. Yeah. No. And then this Lechka Paul match. Um, I mean, so Paul was on the other end of it because, like, I I can guarantee you that if Paul was up six two seven six, it would have been the same score line. <laughs> but I other- know, I know. <laughs> but to be fair, like, so I stayed off this because of the Paul health concerns. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious, like, you know, we'll never know, but I, I can imagine there being something real there, especially because he remember he rolled his ankle too against Sarundolo in the Eastbourne final. So we don't know if that's yeah, 100% either. He had a glute injury, apparently. Which... And then he had a glute strain, which is why he pulled out a double. Oh, we think, I mean, we think, like, we think that that's a real injury and not an excuse. But, like, 
it also could be it could be an excuse, right? It could be like well, he was playing doubles with Tiafo, so maybe like Paul was the one that came up with that excuse, but like maybe Tiafo was the one that didn't want to play doubles. Like it's that's that's very possible too, right? Because well, especially how backed up the singles draw got, right? Like I could have seen them just right. being like with the singles draw being backed up, like in us and both the top being half in it, was like... more backed up than the bottom half, or well, they're both in the top half actually, right? So. I mean, I, I just could have seen it being like like the the singles draw yeah. is backed up. I don't want to play. Like, I need a reason. You know, this right. is what. I'm like, I, I say it often because, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not. You know what I mean? Like, I, it's it's yeah. It's it, because well, it's an for, individual sport. Like, well, to me, I hit the Lechka money line just because of that that fact, right? The fact, but you don't know, right? Concerns. Maybe, maybe not. Like, you have no idea. But even if there are no health concerns, I put this at pretty close to a pick em, Maybe a little okay. bit favor in Paul. Like I wasn't I mean, in that case, it probably you know. makes sense. I actually thought Paul should have been a bigger favorite. Um, but then with the gluten injury, I was like, okay, well now I don't want to play this at all. So I got kind of not lucky there, but the, the, the also I, me. you know was Sarindolo just totally gassed? But like, even if he was gassed, to beat him two, two, and two is a decent performance. It is, but Paul had good performances this year on grass too, right? Um, and Paul and Lechka. He lost two and three to Alcaraz. We got Alcaraz the beast, but like two and three is not great, you know. So it's it's tough, man. I don't I don't know what to make of Lechka. That that'll be a good discussion because we'll I'm sure we'll talk about his match coming up. Yeah. So it's um like Paul is like underpowered in that matchup, to be honest. Against Lechka, he is, but Paul's yeah. underpowered against you know. Lechka had sixty three winners in this match. That's pretty uh, impressive. Yeah, he won twenty more points total. He was five. That makes sense, right? Paul won two. I mean, Paul only broke him once and he won two tie breaks. Like, right. Paul was lucky to make it to a fifth set. Like, that makes sense. Absolutely. Let's yeah. was a way better player throughout this match. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Although another match, man, where both guys had a hard time winning winning return points. Um. So that's something to take note of. Yeah. A lot of guys struggling to, to win return points this week, man. A lot of guys mm. and a lot of guys advancing despite it yeah it's about being um, opportunistic i guess i mean we could let's go to the next uh, little section well that's that's why that's that's why you that's why we have the segue yeah chris eubanks is the next guy to talk about yeah and like he's he's kind of the ultimate here but i mean so against nori though and this this is watching the match you definitely could tell this he won 40 percent of his return points against nori which is like Pretty impressive for Chris Eubanks. He's actually playing really well. He's confident. That's I think like that's probably the best way to describe it. He's just playing confident tennis. And he's, he's like, playing better than he has in his entire career. But he's like picking good spots to be aggressive and take control of points. Yes. Like right. Yes. Um, um, but do you think this, I, I mean, I, I actually think this is partly good Eubanks, but this is like probably 40% good Eubanks, 60% bad Nori. That's, yeah. that's Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know. and I don't think I even played this match, but yeah, I, I agree with that. Like, like Nori's just, yeah, Nori, I mean, Nori hasn't been good now for months though. So then my mind, that's not even a take. Like he's not, he hasn't been at a top 20 level for, for months now. Um, we we hammered the Con- O'Connell over Vesley. I think was that one of our plays that day, or not? Or did that not make it to the GBM play of the day? That, that it day was well. not. We both played it, but it, it very well could have been. Yeah, it, it was probably strong enough to be one. I think we had one we liked better that. Yeah, did we like the Hubie over better that missed? The Hubie was that over? Is yeah, that what we... we did? Like the Hubie over twenty one, which missed. Yeah, which I don't feel bad about. Like that was a we'll, no, we'll get into that. Match. Okay, but um. And then Eubanks beat O'Connell today in three tie breaks. Um, which I guess I had, like... I had Eubanks minus one and a half games here. I thought wow, he okay. had to break at some point. I mean, it hit. Would you? What? What did you? You didn't have to like juice on that. I was seeing like two and a half. Uh it was minus one twenty. Wow. Okay, then you must have got it at a better yeah. time. I don't know if I, when did you get that. I like live bet it in the first set because O'Connell oh okay started, that's why okay started the set serving so I was that that's okay. what I was waiting for 
I was hoping O'Connell would start the set serving. Yeah. And then bet Eubanks minus the game. Okay. You, I didn't realize they actually moved it a full game because oh. of you of uh, O'Connell serving first. That was good then. That was a good, good play. I didn't realize they moved I, it a whole I wanted game to play Eubanks in some capacity here because like. I, I just know. thought this line was perfectly set. It was like two and a half or three or something. And I had stayed away because I couldn't, uh, like, I thought it was. O'Connell's pretty tough, man. O'Connell's not like he's, we, we talked about him several times. Like he's, he's tough. I feel, I mean, I don't know. I'm not like. Eubanks has a huge serve edge. Right. And O'Connell's kind of underpowered. Yeah. But like in this match, I mean, I don't know. Like Eubanks was one of five on break points. O'Connell was one of three. Like it came down to three tie breaks. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't really like, yeah, it was really I guess not it's that a much point, of a, it's a pretty close like, looking match. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, and actually like another guy who's basically a serve bot who's made it like, you know, I mean, he basically is a serve bot. Like he, it's, it's, He's, I get it. He's playing, he's playing better tennis on the return than he ever has. I'll give you that, but it still isn't good. No, it will never be good. Right. But I, I think he's, he's playing pretty well from the ground. Like ever shots are making progression in rallies, right? Like, but I feel like he plays the score a lot. Like if he gets a love 15, he does. He plays like, he's like, isn't where he plays the score. And I will give you that. I will grant yeah. you. That. I mean, if he falls behind he smart like, for him, like that's smart tactics. Cause he's not going to break anyways from 30 love. He's just not good enough off. the right. return. Game. Exactly. I get it. I get it. I hear you. And that's why I'm saying he's playing better. I'm not like fully on the Eubanks train yet, but like he's playing better. And I think the he's, problem is he's, he's a live dog surface, against Sissy right? Pass. He's a live dog against Sissy Pass, in my opinion. Yeah, we'll talk about that match. I'm excited to talk about that one. With yeah, you. That's I, I have a thought there, and I want to see your thought. Okay. Um. All right, and then that last little section, uh, Jiri against Shelton. Did you have a bet there? Oh, I mean, I was on Shelton. I, 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 I love Shelton, and it didn't work out. I think I had Shelton like minus a set and a half or something. Like, yeah, it didn't didn't work out well at all. Yeah. Um. And then I had, uh, but D- but Darius D- 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 is playing much better on the quicker courts. Uh, Sean Calvert called yes. it out on the Be- Game Bet Match podcast. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he he used to be a clay guy, and he's somebody he really got. I, I really have to change that take because he's playing he's playing better on the quicker courts than ever has. It's impressive to see him start start to make the adjustments there. And the last guy we'll talk about before we get into the fourth round matches, I am still not impressed with Sitsipas. I'm still not like. Breaking old man Murray once in five sets is a joke. Um, he broke today. He broke Dare twice in three sets. Like, I mean, it was. It's just like he won twenty eight percent of his points on return. Like that's just not. That's just not good enough against a guy like Dare, who's like not a particularly good server. Like that's not good. He's basically at this point another serve bot. He's like a serve forehand bot. Right now he's basically playing like Nico Yari, and like and to be fair, like this is kind of where I'm going. This like. Even during Sitsipas's like terrible times, he was still winning sets in a lot of those matches. Right. I, yeah, I, I I hear what you're saying, and, and I'm, not, like, I'm not saying that like a win against Murray is is voiding Sitsipas of his issues. I I just think like that's a match that builds confidence, and like even if you're returning terribly. When you build some confidence, you you find ways through matches more so than when you're not, when you don't have a win like that. It's just like an intangible. It's not really like based on stats. It's just like an intangible. Maybe. I don't know. Like, is it, it's hard to quantify, right? Like, it's something that every announcer says in every sport, right? When you have momentum, you're doing well. But is it like, is it, is momentum, that? Really- but mo- momentum can sometimes be judged on the eye test, not necessarily with stats. Right, like not everything in sports. Yeah, is- but there's a bias here, right? Because like every, because it's like a generally, it's a generally accepted like trait, and so you have a generally accepted trait like this. Like, and this is true across all sports, right? Like every sport, like they're like all oh, the hot shooter in basketball, the the hot pitcher in baseball, right? And like, right. but and the and the hot pitcher is hot until he's not performing well anymore, and then he's the cold pitcher, and then he sucks, like, right? And so it's like it's like a and like looking back, yeah, you can always like call it right, but it's like it's kind of like a backwards looking i don't know it's 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 
but it's tough because like we always talk about in tennis and we're always betting on these guys because they're in good form right and like i like so i i think it's like you're probably right it probably matters it's just like and i mean the confidence clearly does matter right because you look at a guy like right now who like dan evans who has no confidence and like so clearly it's an issue right so clearly like yeah like can't Cressy, say right who lost 11 straight matches or something like when even when he's in a winning position, you just feel like it's going to go wrong at some. Point. I think Cressy just sucks. Like I have a different take on Cressy. That's why I'm going with Dan Evans. Instead. Yeah, but he could like, play a crappy opponent and still, you know, he's in a winning position and just yeah. will lose losing. Yeah, right? just because that that lack of confidence. So, I mean, I bet Jiri to win a set here. I didn't go all in like you. I, I thought this would be like a four mat four set match. Um, and I think Jiri was up a break in the second set. He only had points to go up a right. double break, I think. Oh, so like it was a complete, like, like it was a complete choke job. I, and then like Derry Der- Der- throws in some of these, but it was a complete choke job by Derry, like he sometimes does. Um, and I guess like that's the point. So like my my point here is like sits a pause for the match was three out of four on break points. Derry was one out of four. You're gonna have a really hard time convincing me that like sits a pause is like in this way better state. Because he converted three out of four break points against Lazlo Derry. Like, it's just such a small sample. Okay. And I trust, I, I, you You probably know where I'm going. Like, in the fourth round match against Eubank, I'm, I, I want to fade Sissy Poss in some way. Like, it's yeah. very, very difficult for me to back Sissy Poss because of that point. But I'm a little bit more weary because of that confidence angle, you know, from that Murray match. And I, yeah, I, I thought it was a decent performance against Murray, despite the, old man thing and the the, the one honestly break. i felt like i i was like i even watched parts of this match and i wasn't that yeah. impressed it felt like it felt like the announcers and the crowd were like so desperate for it to like look impressive that they were like pumping up like anytime either That'd guy like right. walked on the court right. like every every time sissy pass hit a forehand winner like chris fowler was, was like wow this guy's an amazing forehand like it wasn't that amazing like and like the only I mean, they, they, they even about before right? like a lot of the main ten, like tennis is so slam oriented like and what we've seen is like you know like intitipas is built as this top guy and he's been built as this top guy now for like three years and like i just don't think it's the case on the grass right now like i don't i still don't see him as more than like a top 50 guy yeah so i guess with that we can get into the uh the disappointment any, any other I, I had so many murray like I had the Murray three one. I okay. had Murray as a last leg of a four leg parlay. Um, I had a sissy pot like a, that, this was a futures. I had sissy pot to lose in the second round at plus. Yeah, you had a lot like of stuff on three hundred. I had a ton. I was really I was pretty conservative there. I just had a, I just had the sissy pot minus. Uh, oh, I, was, I said the, the the Murray minus one forty, whatever, whatever the money line I ended up getting. I was well. quite confident Murray would pull that out. I mean, he he got close, but it's just like it was yeah. discouraging. All right, so yeah, it was a, it was a, um, but it was it was a tough day, man. I thought the books had a lot of these matches pretty well, pretty well read. Real set, it's, you know, with the exception of that of that Fokina rune on, uh, over. I thought that was the only one that was like completely mm-hmm. like a, a mistake. Um, All right, you want to head to the bottom half. <clears throat> Did we not touch on the bottom half? Yet? Oh no, we didn't get the bottom half yet at all. No. Oh. All right, so uh, kicking off the bottom half, uh, Sinner lost a set to Haliz. You had the first set money line. I had Haliz to win a set, so that was kind of cool. We both hit that. Um, uh, no, I had Sinner three one, not necessarily. Oh, okay, okay, three one okay. plus two fifty. So I got. You that. hit plus two fifty. I, I had Haliz to win a set. Period. Okay. Um, good hits. Good hits. Yeah, good hits. That was nice. Um. Uh, the the Gal- Gal- this might have been one of your more foolish plays trying to play the Galan Emir match. I really don't understand why you did that. It just seemed like an underspot. Just with yeah. their like you know, they're they're very low floors, right? Yeah, I hear you. I hear like, you. I just man, uh it's like Emer just ugh. came back from two sets. He might just not want to try, right? And then like yeah. is Galan. Like I <laughs> but Speaking of which, Emer did, I don't know if we discussed on the pod last time, but Emer did come back from two sets against Fritz. That was an impressive three sets. I don't know how much of it yeah. you saw. That I was mean, I saw a little bit of it, and the, the little bit I saw was really impressive out of Emer. Yeah. He um, was just, like, on fire. Just, like, yeah, I've never seen him play that well. Ever. Which is weird, because, like, usually he's just not, like, usually he's, like, just running around, getting a lot of balls back. Right. That's kind of the Emer way, but, yeah. 
that he was actually like being aggressive. And like, we could talk a little bit about Fritz here. Like, I actually do think he has a slam problem. I, I know that you you're like, oh, it's not it's not that bad. I just think he's so one dimensional. He's so one that like if if what he does doesn't work, he turns into a, a like a guy 70 in the world, 80 in the world. Right. But what's like, like is Medvedev more multidimensional? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Medvedev's just standing at the back, like pushing balls back. Uh he has very he has some subtleties which are different. What subtleties? <laughs> um he might start going bigger on the second serve, which he does sometimes, right? Like if he feels that he's like losing a okay. lot of points on serve, he does that. Okay. Um, he start he can play a little bit more aggressively, but he can also like tail back and start playing more defensively. So he has some solid. Uh, I don't know. You don't really see him play aggressively too often. He's always so far back. But he's capable of playing aggressive tennis. Like if he's really like getting bullied, he'll start grunting. Like when he grunts, he he starts trying to hit the ball a little harder. I'm not saying it's the best style. A little bit. I don't think those... it's. I don't know, man. I think it's. I think it's a little bit of a stretch. I, I guess my, my point. Like, I, I'm bringing up Medvedev because he's somebody who's thought of as more multidimensional, right? Like, I, I think Medvedev. He, I think Medvedev. He, he kind of varies spots and he makes a lot smarter shots. I think that's the. So I, I'm actually Medvedev was the wrong guy to bring up, but like, yeah, there's a lot of guys who are pretty limited dimensionally who don't have like. Well, Sinner is too. Well, so is Rublev, right? Like half the top ten is right. Like, so I, I don't know. Like, it's it's. But Fritz, even more when he's struggling, it's a it's a really precipitous downfall, and it, he struggles to get it back more so than the other top guys. That's how I feel, which which makes best of five really tough for him, because I just think like like Fritz was just not in, like and I, and I was kind of like I was saying like okay he's still okay he's still okay and I didn't play this match but I was saying okay he's still okay Fritz is still okay he's still okay he's still okay like and I think I was just wrong he's just not like. He's just not playing that well right now. You know, he's just like, like whatever reason, like ever since the. But that's what but I honestly, mean. He's not playing well. It's really, it's really hard for him to get it back. Like he's really, you know. Yeah, I want to see something. I'm curious about something. Cause I think, I think you're right. Um, Cause you're right. It does. It does certainly feel like Fritz has more bad losses than guys. Um, then and we've talked about this before. It seems like, I mean, yeah, this is kind of. And granted, he's zero and three in his last three, but like, even given that, right? Like, he's twenty one and nine. It, but honestly, he, he was fine up until like it's really like it's just been like ever since ever since they left the um, ever since Monte Carlo, he's just not been good. I mm-hmm. think is more what this is like. He just hasn't been good ever since Monte Carlo. Like. Yeah, I just right like the whole clay season. Like outside of Monte Carlo, he he wasn't good the whole clay season. No, but he and then has the grass, one, the grass he has one like style of playing. But I don't know if like <sighs> Medvedev know. is like, also like I mean going back to Medvedev. Okay, so Medvedev is the wrong example. Right? I I actually think right. Medvedev is multi dimensional. Like Medvedev is able to like spot the ball in different places better. And he's he's actually a really smart tactician, which is probably yeah. the difference. Like. I was trying to use somebody who's not also thought of as one dimensional, right? Like that was, was my point, but like, um, but like, but Fritz also can't come into net because he's so stiff up there. Right. Like the only way that he can win is by blasting balls from the baseline. And if, if that doesn't work, you get three, four and two against Michael Yeamer. Yeah. Fine. But I mean, like, I don't know. I just think, I think it's a different issue. I think Fritz is just like, like I all like Fritz just hasn't been good. And like, it's time for me to admit it. Like he hasn't been good since Monte Carlo. And I think it's just like, I don't know but what's good. Up. But what I'm saying is that's a reason why he's not been good is because people are figuring out how one dimensional he is. I think that has something to do with it. You know, like, he hasn't improved other parts of his game and like it's it's showing. I think that that like I don't see how he gets out of this funk unless he just starts bashing more balls in the court. You know, but if it's like 
I mean, it might be partly confidence based, but if it's not, then he's going to have to like really improve his game. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Right. But it seems like, it seems like he's been, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't think he's been like figured out. I think it's just like, I just think when, for whatever reason, he's just not, not good right now. Um, Cause it's been, it's been bad ever since the, ever since the, uh, the clay season. Mm-hmm. Ever, ever since Monte Carlo, rather that yeah. ever since that loss versus Rublev. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, this little weird section with Pam Mayo, Mute, and Safiulin. Safiulin's on a hell of a run, huh? And he just rips wins yeah, over is. and over again. Started with that RBA match. Yeah, it's like continued that momentum. Yeah. Um, plenty of errors, but also plenty of winners. Um, yep. I mean, Peo was probably gassed after the Mayo win. Um, because he also played five sets against Korich in the first round. Right? Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, I played. I think I played. I played the Peo money line and I paid for it. Um, I just, I'm still not sure if I'm really bought in on Safulin. We'll talk about his match with Chapo, uh, but I'm still not sure I'm really bought in there, man. Me neither. It's it's very hard for me to back him because of like how erratic he is and like how many errors he hits. Safulin. Safulin, yeah. But that's and Chapo both. I read exactly. It's funny that it's a fourth round matchup because they're both it like is. it. It makes it really, 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 really hard to bet. Like <laughs> I'm very curious about watching that. Um, yeah, see what happens because it feels like Safiulin is like righty Chapo almost. Yeah. I think even yeah. more than Fokina because like Fokina. Well, I think so too. I, I don't actually don't really think Fokina is Shapo. I don't really don't think that's the, the, I, don't. The, I don't think it's the right. I think Safiulin's a lot closer. Um, I guess it's like lack of discipline rather than lack of tactics. Right, right. Fokina just like makes really dumb, dumb choices. But I like, yeah. yeah. But man, this is why I want to go with this match. So Brody beat Rude in the second <laughs> round and then he lost to Shapo in the third round. Brody is not good. Like, I know he's made the third round now two years in a row and he gets hype. He's not good. Like, he's not. Like, if he goes to Newport, he's a hard fade for me. Like, he's not good. Like, like okay, so... He gets Brody, Mark as this grass court specialist. Is he better than Ryan Penniston? Like, probably, but, like, also Penniston is not good. <laughs> like, we, we, talk, we talked Penniston up, but, like... It was more of a price point, you know what I mean? Where right. it was like, okay, Penniston is 85 like eighty-five to one to win a quarter. Like, and it was like, okay, he's like semi-competent. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of. I feel kind of the same way about Brody. Like, they're like, they're like high challenger level grass court players, and then like the rest is kind of garbage. But like, right. So I'm like, like if you look like, okay, Brody beat Constant Lachien, and then he beat Casper Ruud. Like Casper didn't even want to be here. I know he's allergic to. He's completely. He's allergic to grass. He doesn't. He he's, he doesn't practice on the surface. He's allergic to it. So he, he practices, practices like golf, hardcore tennis. What? He practices golf more than tennis. Yeah, he practices golf. He basically takes the grass course season as an off season. And like, yeah, yeah. Like he's not. He's clearly not. You know what I mean? And then last year, Brody beat. Um, he beat Lucas Klein in five sets. Who he's, you know, who's like, yeah, I'm he's, he's Lucas Klein, a like, challenger level guy. Yeah, and then he beat. Schwartzman on on grass, Whoop and that was like the beginning. What? Whoop de do? Yeah, like, like he just, he's just, he's just. I'm just. I'm sick of the Leon Brody hype, man. Like, and I was so disappointed because I wanted to play Chapo so bad in this match versus Brody, but like MP9 and I were talking about it, like Dave from MP9, yeah. and we just, I just couldn't find a way to play Chapo that made sense. Well, I hit the Brody set one money line, and I cashed. Yeah, yeah, so, which I think is, you know, I mean, well, the, worked, the rationale like, behind it was like, I thought Chapo was the better player, but I thought that Brody would come out kind of with like high adrenaline and that might also wear off because he's he played five sets the day before. Yeah, I don't think it was a terrible play. So that was my like, logic. It was plus 180, I think, which I would have taken it, it like plus logic, 160 like, or better. But I will say Brody hit four winners in that first set versus Shapo. Yeah, I, really I, got, I got lucky. I got lucky. I mean, it was Shapo made twenty. Shapo made twenty four unforced errors in a set. 
<laughs> in a 6 4 set. I said it didn't even go to a tie break. 24 errors in a set. That's insane. at Wimbledon, which yeah, is like a notorious for not calling on first right, standards. Right. It's true. Like it was just, you know what I mean? Like it's like, embarrassing. Yeah. Like he's just, he's, he's but like it, and was, it was still a 6 4 set, which shows how bad Brody is. Right. Like I, but right? I was just so frustrated because like, I like, I was looking through the lines so desperately wanting to hit Chapo because he's so much better than Brody. But then, like, and I thought the books were, like, the, but the problem with Chapo was, like, the books can be off on Chapo. But, like, he, he, there still is no I don't way think the books even know what kind of line to place with him, to be honest. But it almost doesn't, they don't almost, don't, it doesn't, almost doesn't even matter. As long as they put, like, minus one, as long as they put, like, reasonable odds on both sides of it, it's almost, it's so hard to make money. Because, yeah. like, you have no idea, like, like, you can't bet Chapo 3 0 because he's so erratic. So betting him 3 0 was a disaster. No. You never and then, did. like, everything else was minus money. And can you bet anything on Chapo that's minus money? No, you might as well flush your money down the toilet. Because he, like, Chapo could do anything, right? Like, he could, you know, yeah. like, right. So it's like, I was looking at it, I was like, this should be like, I thought, like, I, like, I honestly, and I know it ended up at six since I'm saying it now and it's like kind of useless, but like, the book had it at four and a half. And I thought it should have been six. But like the only other thing I could have done is taken like five at even money. And I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to Chapo bet at like even money. Like the only way I could have gotten plus money on Chapo was three zero. And like, you can't bet Chapo three zero because like, he's such a disaster. Oh, you can't. All right, let's move on to that last quarter. Uh, so we got Rublev. You're, you're tired of talking Chapo? Yeah, I'm tired of it. We're going to talk more about him with, with Safiola. That's true. That's enough true. for now. Oh man, so I'm, uh, this is my, my probably my highlight of the tournament. I hit the Rublev over golf fan live bet when Rublev was down two breaks in the third set at plus 120. Like as soon as he went down 4 1 double break in the third set, I got the, I, I hit That's it at plus good. 20. That's pretty um, good. Yeah. Yeah. And like I didn't think he was actually going to come back and win the third set, but, um, but, well, I had a four unit futures on Rublev to make the fourth round. At plus okay, I had I had a unit on. I I did, I, I was the same. I, yeah. I had the same futures as you did. Well, looking at his draw, I, I you know put four units on it because like you had he had Karatsev, Barrios, Vera, Gofan, and I forget who the seed was in that little section. Uh Baez. Baez, right? So like, yeah, but Baez. Yeah, it was a terrible. Set. I mean, it was like it's a slightly terrible tough money section. For me. It was slightly plus money for me to make the fourth round. I was like, well, I think we got like plus one fifty on it or something. Exactly. That's why I hammered that. You know, like yeah. I, that was a great uh, plus EV play, to be honest. I mean, Kuras is a tough matchup for him, but he got through that relatively decently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he honestly not, hasn't looked good though. No, he hasn't. He hasn't looked good. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk more about him. On the um, other hand. I mean, I, I also lost that bet. Uh, I had like a single bet Rublev to win in straight sets against GoFan. Oh, GoFan, yeah. So that was, that was I wasn't good. on it at all. I thought like I thought the line was pretty well set there. Like I so said, the line Rublev, bet, I hasn't, like... Rublev hasn't been good, but Bublik has. Oh, Bublik I know. Has yeah, that, but yeah, yeah and Bublik has been too. really good. He lost his set in a tie break to Mackey, but man, ever since then, he's been good. He's been really, really good. And he's, he's been, been in Fuego this whole grass season, man. Like it's been really yeah. amazing. Um, no, clock and I should have hit the misses. Morrow ammo, man. That was a mistake. I, I should have hit that. I feel really dumb for not hitting that. That's a, that's kind of a disappointing uh, missed opportunity. But it's uh, Bublik is, I mean, playing incredibly well and no clowning whatsoever. Yeah, he has. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm sure we'll talk plenty about his matchup with Rublev. That's why I was going to move on from there. Okay. All right. Um, I hit the uh, minus. I think five and a half. I've been laying games with Bublik more than sets. Um, just because like, I'm still worried about him just like tanking a set away. So I'd rather lay games. So I've been laying more sets than games, but laying more one and a half sets instead of three zero and getting decent odds to do it still. That way you can tank one set. Cause the problem if he tanks a set and loses at six, one, it makes it really hard to cover the game. That's true too. But so far there ha- it hasn't been, there hasn't been any clouds. Yeah, it hasn't it's been, been an issue, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if you tank a set, it's probably better to lay a set lay sets i guess but i don't know he's just been breaking serve at will like he's been he's been breaking at a crazy rate 
So he's been decent on his turn. He's been like, you know, he's like, like we're, we're, we're so used to him being a serve bot and he's like, he hasn't been. So we're not. like impressed. He's been really good on return. He's been really, really good. On he's been turn. good on return. And even on, on faster really, really good. grass in Halle, he was breaking a lot. Yeah, he's been really, really good. He's been really, really good. Oh, I'm going to take that back. He's been really, really good. I think he's been the second best player in this draw after Djokovic. Yeah. I And he's I actually over- think like, if there's a guy out there who can beat Djokovic, I was talking with some of my buddies about this today. Um, like some of my buddies after my tennis match because we went out for lunch afterwards. Yeah. Um, I think if there's a guy in this in this draw who can beat Djokovic, it's Bublik on grass. Like well, if- he he has the Curios game, right? So whatever yeah. Curios did last year is what Bublik can pull off this year. And I think that could, that could kind of annoy Djokovic because like Bublik can like just win points with like just these like random weird, like not weird, but like random great shots. Like Djokovic can't do anything about. And it's like not like, <laughs> and it's it's also not like classical tactically correct tennis. Right. Like I feel like Djokovic gets annoyed when guys don't play like, like, uh, like proper tactics. And when guys are beating him with like improper tactics, he's like, like, this is like nah, not unfair, but it's like kind of like a, what the fuck, you know, like, like yeah. what is this guy like? This guy's just right. doing this like garbage stuff. It's like one out of five type stuff. It keeps getting lucky. Like, what is this? And like, Bubba can pull that off. He can. He's talented enough to pull it off. Like, if Rublev wins the fourth round match and plays Djokovic, that's like that has like three, four, and five written all over it, right? Yeah. If if that, like, if, if that. Rublev can do if that, that. Like, I think exactly. it's worse. Like, if that, yeah. yeah. On grass, it might be a little bit closer than like at, at the Australian Open, but like Bublik is the way tougher matchup for Novak. Yeah. And if you look at this draw, like like with Novak, like it's pretty tough draw to play Jordan Thompson second round, Vavrinka third round, Herca- Hubie Hercatch fourth round. It Pop- is. He got a surprisingly tough draw. He did. He got a surprisingly, a surprisingly tough, tough draw. I mean, yeah. to play then Sinner in the semis and then like Alcaraz in the final, like that's that's not an easy draw. So and I think that's why I'm saying like he still has looked pretty good. You know, like he's he's still disposed like disposing of those guys. It hasn't been like I don't think he looked that good against Thompson. Okay. Like I thought that that was like B minus C plus Djokovic. First two sets, Vavrinka, that was that was like more like A minus Djokovic. Yeah. And then the third set, I mean Vavrinka, credit to Vavrinka, he dug in, right? Like he he's a professional and yeah. Uh, made that set competitive. He actually choked away that third set because he was up 5-3. Yeah. Um, And then just made four just horrendous errors. I think a double and like just a couple bad forehand misses. It was really painful because I had the Vavrinka plus two and a half sets at plus 210. Yeah. So that was a tough. That tough was a painful loss. loss. But, but, like, I mean, but with Djokovic, like tie breaks aren't really a coin flip, right? Like that's part of the problem. Is even once Djokovic gets to a tiebreak, it's almost like like I think he's like almost two out of three in his career in tiebreaks. He's insanely good at them. He is, but I think like that's also a little bit of recency bias. Like like he's been incredible recently, but it wasn't like that like his entire career. Well, but like for for Djokovic though, like when I'm thinking about Djokovic matches, I almost throw out like. Like, you can't really, con- can, like, anything before, like, 2020, you can't really consider anymore, though, when you're betting Djokovic matches. Right? Sure. Like, you can't, you know, you can't be like, oh, Djokovic was great in 2014 and in the 2014 U.S. Open against Federer. So now I'm right, going to bet right. him, you know, in 2023 yeah. Wimbledon. Like, I mean, it, it's just, like, it's really impressive. In, in his career in tie breaks, he is... Probably, like, 65%, 66%. I actually saw this on the, the ATP. The ATP website ran something on this like a while back. Um, 65%. Yeah, which is very high. So, like, even like, which is cool, which is like, the point is like, even given that you got Stan to a tie break, like, your but bet my, was barely good. But my point is that is that that was not a good tie break from Djokovic. Djokovic had two easy errors, right? And, and yeah. I didn't had see it, but I, I heard that it was not good, yeah. And choked it away. So that was not a good tiebreak from, from Vavrinka. Even the ones against Thompson, like the one that, that, that Djokovic won against Thompson, it was due to a Thompson double fault. It wasn't due to Djokovic, like, 
playing some. Well, honestly, that's part of what Djokovic does, right? Is he just like he just like a lot of times in the tiebreakers, he just, he just puts balls in the quarter. Yeah, but I guess you're saying against, against Muverde, he didn't really, but like he didn't even but, have to. Yeah, because Thompson double faulted. So to me, that's more bad bad Thompson than good Djokovic. Like yeah. Djokovic against Kachinov at at the French when he turned that match around, that was an insane tiebreak. That was good Djokovic. Yeah. This, these these tie breaks were not, and it shows me that he's a little bit vulnerable. I'm not saying that Hubie's going to beat him or, or uh, you know, Bublik, but I'm just saying, like... But who can actually take advantage of that? Bublik, that's it. Like, the only guy in this draw that I could see that could do that is Bublik, and maybe... Alcaraz. Actually, you know what? There's a bunch of guys that could maybe do it. Like, any of the serve bot types could maybe do it if they just serve their butts off and don't get broken. Just easier said than done because Joe is the best returner. Yeah, um, but but good serve beats good return. Right, right. There's right. a reason so why that, that's a good transition into uh, fourth round matches. So um, let's well, start. There's still a little bit to talk, right? There's a uh, there's I want I want to brag about a couple of my bets. So I hit the Musetti in the second round uh, minus games against Munar. I think I played like six games and Musetti got there. Like there, there were people talking about the uh, the head to head being in favor of Munar, but I was like, it like on grass. You don't need to the, brag. This this was like a week ago. Like you don't need to brag about this this one. This was like this was this was more recent than our last pod, wasn't it? Or wasn't it? <laughs> and then I and then I also wanted to talk about how the uh, that her cats Musetti match was actually pretty close. It really wasn't like it really wasn't a straight. It wasn't like an easy straight set win. The third set was a runaway, but the first two sets were pretty competitive. Okay. Yeah. They were competitive, but yeah, Hubie is just a better grass court player. Like, like we 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 call we didn't call that right, and I don't think there's there's any way. Oh, uh, see, I don't feel bad about that one. I don't feel bad about calling the over there. Like, I don't because I don't think that like. Like the first two sets were basically were almost dead even. Right, like, I, I think was Musetti up a break in one of the sets. Did Musetti even break in that match at all? Could be wrong, but oh yeah, Musetti. Musetti didn't, didn't break at all. Yeah, the entire match. But he was 0 4 on break points. Hubie was two out of four. Like, yeah, he may have had some 1540s or something. What? Uh, he may have had some 1540s <laughs> or something that he couldn't convert. Yeah. Well, he had a 15. Like, Hubie, he, I think he had three break points serving for the match against, or like when Hubie served for the match, he said he got at least 1540. He might have gotten a third break point. Right. But like, my point was like, first two sets, like, Hubie was the better player in all three sets, but like, Musetti easily could have won one of those first two sets. Like, I think it's 50-50 that Musetti wins one of those first two sets. And if he does, then the overcash is e- easily. Right. And so like it's easy to it's easy to say, oh, the bet was we, we you lost the bet until it was wrong. And I don't I don't think that was the case in this case. So you do you like my take on uh, on Hubie here at Wimbledon? Because like I think he rallies slightly better because like slightly, the- but I don't think it's much. Like, and it's this this is kind of what I was going with is like, yeah, I think it's slightly, but like I don't think he like my point was like going back the other way with it, like I don't think he was like mild, he wasn't that much better than Musetti in this match. The third set, yes, the third set he was way better. But the first two sets he wasn't but that I'm not much necessarily better. talking about this match. I'm just talking about in general. Like I feel like Hubie rallies better on this grass because it's slower. Like, whereas he struggled rallying in Stuttgart and uh in Halle because that's like really fast grass. Right. So I, I think like this kind of grass is what suits him the best because his serve is more a placement based serve. It's not really pace based. And one thing about Hubie, which makes him really good on serve is his second serve is excellent. I think his second serve might be one of the better ones on tour. I agree with the second serve. Um, I'll, I'll buy the take on the second serve. Trying to look up he, like, like average. I mean, Huey's first serve is still big. I think it's still over 130. It's big. I mean, I guess if you want to say it's not like the, like the pure fastest. Yeah, but he also places it well, right? So it's like a combination of like pretty decent pace with, with good placement. Yeah. You know, which makes it a really, really good serve. 
So I, I think, but I actually think he's rallying slightly better in this tournament. And I think that this, this uh, slower grass helps him. Yeah, slightly. I still don't think he's, he's, I mean, I, I still, yeah, I, 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 I think it's easy to say that like he's played guys so far also who like this year he's played guys so far who like aren't going to give him a lot of trouble in terms of like the rallying like Musetti's style of rallying shouldn't be is, is like not like that bad form right like Musetti's not like really the backhand's good but Musetti's not crushing the ball and who um, they, like Choinsky Choinsky and and yeah, and ARV, still, like, still got to a breaker which is not good yeah. And ARV. yeah, so it's it's been a pretty easy draw. I, I give you that. We'll see against Novak. I mean, that's that's interesting. Um, yeah. All right, so good transition into fourth round matches. So, um, so where do you want to start? Let's start with the bottom half because that's tomorrow. Okay. So, so we can start with Hubie versus Djokovic. Okay. Um, yeah. I already looked at the lines, so. Um, I did not. So if you want to play guess, I want to play guess the lines then. All right, Hubie and Djokovic first match. Um, I'm guessing Djokovic is a five and a half game favorite. Six and a half at minus one twenty five. The money line is Djokovic minus eighteen hundred. Hubie is a nine to one dog. Um, the over under is thirty three. It's minus 120 for the over, minus 110 for the under. 33? Yeah. That's probably the play to me. Over 33? Yeah. If I was going to play this, I'd play this as an over 33. For me, this is a stay away. But if I was going to play it, that's how. Like, if Hubie gets there, if Hubie... Um, like, if Hubie wins a set you get there and if you can get two sets to a tie break you get there but you probably need two tie breaks to get there or you need two seven five sets i actually don't mind the plus six and a half to be honest at even money like do you really think Djokovic has a two break set here i mean obviously he could but that's not. Uh, I don't. I don't know. But like, it's still the lines actually moved ever just since I talk. It's now minus six and a half is minus one thirty. For me, that's too much juice. No, no, no. I, I'm talking about taking the six and a half with you. Oh, take. Oh, you take the six and a half and even money that's with you. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That's getting to like. Oh man, it's tempting. Like if that gets to seven, I'd be all. It would over. be. It would be a juiced seven. Yeah, what well, what I would probably do if it got to seven is take an all a lot of times you get an alternate game line a game like a half game lower at plus money. So like, this is tough. It's like, it's like, am I happy with six and a half at even? Because right now it's six and a half is even money, and am I happy with six and a half at even money, or do I want to take the um, or do I want to hope the market moves this a little bit more and I can get six and a half at plus money? Because the, I mean, the other problem is this could go three, four, and four, or four, three, and four. Could be one break in each set. I actually don't three. mind Hubie to win a set at plus one forty here. Yeah, this line has moved. Uh, when I was looking at it before, it was uh, I was a stay away before, but it wasn't nearly as appetizing for Hubie. I think it was like, and the, the money has been coming in on Djokovic here, and I might be willing to fade the money here. So it's five and zero, oh, but I can I can remember instances where Hubie has taken sets or played. Yeah, he's taken a set two out of five times, and both times on the faster. Well, two two out of three times on the faster surfaces. Like on the slow surface, he's got no shot. So two out of three on the faster surfaces, Hubie's taken a set. So basically, you can scratch the clay matches, right, and just like take these yeah. matches into consideration. Well, except Madrid is at altitude, but so it's a little bit interesting. But it's clay. The movement is different. So uh, no, nah, I'm not I'm not really gonna consider that. The Dubai one, I mean three and five. I remember that match. The second set was actually quite close. And then this was a really good match, actually. The one in Paris. Seven, yeah, six, but, seven, but you're getting I mean now you're getting it to like two years ago, right? Like Hubie, I don't know. And then they played at Wimbledon in 19. 
but like how, how much have these guys changed since then? Not that much. I would say Djokovic, yes. Hubie, not so much. I mean, Djokovic was winning the tournament in 19, and he's winning the tournament now. So it's... it's, it's a, yeah, I yeah. I don't know. But it's just, it's... Um, I probably like the plus six and a half slightly better than the uh, the set. Just because, like, you have to weigh that tiebreak thing. Yeah. With Novak. But I like the set. It's plus 140. It's, 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 a, it's a good price. It is. It is. What is a, what is a tiebreak? What is one tiebreak in the match? You minus one. See, that leads me towards the six and a half. Because, like, if you think there's going to be a tie break, yeah. right? Like, if you think there's going to be a tie break, like, going back to your point before, like, is Hubie really losing a six one set? I don't think so. Or a six two set? I don't think so either. Um, High break in the first set is plus 550. Do you like that? That's kind of interesting. I need to think about that a little bit more, but that's actually kind of interesting. That is interesting. I, I think that's like worth a half unit play. I don't like I think that. so too. I have to think about it, but I think so. I mean, QB to get six holes. I think that makes sense. It's just the problem is like how does Huey break Djokovic? You're you're really you're praying for Huey to come out serving well and get six holes. holes. Yeah. All right, how about some of these props? There's a ton for the fourth round now. Yeah. I looked I looked at these props. I mean, now the problem is the lines have all changed since I looked at them last Djokovic but to win in over 32 and a half at minus 105. That, that's that's appetizing. Yeah, but what's the over under itself? Like 33 and a half? 33. 33, so you're basically getting an extra half a game. Yeah, that's true. Like Djokovic to win and no tie break. I don't like that. Plus 130. Uh be the lead in sets at any point in the match is plus 300. I don't like that. No, because if Djokovic wins the first, you're screwed. Because he's yeah. not winning the second and the third. Um, I think the play here is that first set tiebreak, man. If there's a play, it's a good price. Six and a half and even money. Yeah, it's a good price. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think about this, but like, I think like I, I'm looking at the six and a half and even money. And I'm looking at the first set tiebreak, and that's really it for this match. I think I'm going to do the six and a half. I'm going to do the plus two and a half sets and the tiebreak and do like one unit each. Okay. Like small plays on each, I guess, or maybe like half a unit on one and then two units on the other, but I, I like these lines. Yeah, that, that tiebreak in the first set's appetizing, man. It is. It is really good. Well, how many tiebreaks have they played in their head to head? Five. No, they've played five times and they've played one tie, two tiebreaks in the five matches, two tiebreaks in 14 sets. That's where they're getting that from. That's probably true, but they're they're independent of each other. Like, I don't know. You well, you... if you throw out the 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 all the the Roland Garros, right? It becomes two out of eleven because like Roland Garros, he has no chance. Right. But like, if you put the one grass match they played, there was a tie break there, and there was a seven five and a six four. 
Well, six four. I I, mean, I think I think six four is probably the most likely score a set in this match. I mean, I'm not impressed by a six four, right? That means he gets broken once. It says what I expect. Um. Yeah, I think it all like yeah, but I mean, those are the only lines I'm looking at. Jovich is going to win this match. The 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 one forty for a set's kind of interesting. But I just don't know, man. I don't know how Huey's going to break Djokovic. Mm. Actually, are there any props on Djokovic not being broken? Is that a prop for this? It's a good call. Um, no. No. I might be able to get that on another book. Yeah. What's the Hubie under on break props? That's that's an interesting one. I mean, I'm sure I'm guessing if it, I'd be surprised if you can get plus money at 1.5 under 1.5. That's probably what it's gonna be. Let me it's see. one point you I think I think the line's gonna be one point five, yeah. I mean, I'd be pleasantly surprised if it's not that wow breaks absurd it's 0. 0.5 and it's minus 125 for the under so they don't think he was gonna break wow i'm actually tempted to hit the over there at minus 110 to be honest like that just, might be... just gonna hand him a break just because yeah or a Djokovic, you know slip up or something like well, that's why I mean he's going to hand him a break just because, right? Like he's he's yeah. like, he, Huey's not going to earn it. It's just going to be like Joe is going to play a bad game at some point. Yeah, I tend to think the same. Like that line should be one and a half, not not half. I and would it, think so. It like, should be under one and a half at like minus one fifty. Yeah, I think so. I, I think I agree with that. Like, I think that's I think that's another good play. Like, in fact, I'm, gonna, I'm 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 thinking about that. I may uh best of best get of a, five set match to get. You may get a text from me late night tonight that asks me to place a, a unit down on that because like <laughs> I'm really like that's a strong consideration. I'm gonna do a little more researching before I hit that because it's always tough to judge these and like that's such a low line. I'm kind of scared, but man, just on the face of it, that looks like a great that that looks like a mm-hmm. that looks like a, a, a steal like. Yeah, it's minus one ten for over uh, half, half a break. break. Like I get it. Like I get it. He was a bad returner, and Djokovic yeah. is a great is a is one of the best. I mean, his serve isn't one of the best, but he's he's one of the hardest guys to break. Ironically, because he backs it up so is, well. What he backs his it up serve so is well. good. His serve is better than you think, and he backs it up so well. Right. Yeah. I mean, the fact that the under half a break is more juice than the over half a break. I mean, that's in a in a best of five set match. Like, and and if it was if this was best of three, okay. But. Yeah, you know, I thought I thought it would be one point five. I mean, zero point five is is pretty solid there, man. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. but uh, Interesting. Man, look at that. Huey will leave three one after four games and sets one and two. He's one hundred and seventy five to one. <laughs> Like the lines in this are just comical. Like it's just comical to see how much the books are like backing Djokovic here. So I feel like you have to go pro Hubie because like Hubie is a respectable player on grass. It's not he's not Pedro Kachin, you know. Well, yeah, and I guess I guess that's another way to look at it. Actually, so that, that that's actually a really good point, Manny. Because the other way to look at this is the value is with Hubie here in some way. Well, yeah, exactly. That's where I'm going with this. So the other way to look at this, right, is so Hubie beat uh, he beat Vavrinka by nine, Thompson by six, and Kachin by seven. So like, I don't know, man. Like. And you can see why he beat Vavrinka by nine, just because Vavrinka is not going to put together three good sets of tennis against Djokovic, just too hard for him physically. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Like, is Kachin really the same as Pedro Kachin? And is Hubie the same as Pedro Kachin and Jordan Thompson? No, he's he's, he's better, better, right? Oh, like, oh, yeah. 
Definitely. Like I'm actually tempted to do the three one after four four games, like at a hundred seventy five to one. Yeah. Like I'm not thinking it's gonna hit. It's just like. And if you want to just lay a third of a unit or something, like lower your risk exposure, and you still make a massive it's, amount of profit. Yeah, it's it's a borderline disrespect to, to Hubie, in my my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I might end up hitting that too. I got to look at that. Like, that's another one to look at. Cause like, it's, it's like so comically high, right? Like at some point, like. It is. Even this is a little appetizing. QB to win the first two sets and lose the match. 50 to one. Yeah. Probably need a little better than that. Yeah. The problem is, I think it's like 40 to 1. Honestly, I probably wouldn't take much more than 40 to 1 from just to win the first two sets. And you're telling me he's not like better than minus. You're telling me he's not like, like, yeah, Hubie's true. not like. You're telling me, Joko, like, jo- you're telling me you get plus 400 on Djokovic if he's down two sets. No, if he, if he, it's like even money if, if Djokovic is down two sets. Right, right. Hubie to break in sets one and two plus 1300. Well, that backs up with your what you're seeing on your other book. They're expecting zero breaks, right? Like, right. <clears throat> I'm just gonna play the the uh, the over half a break. You may get a text from me tonight asking telling you to do that. I, I <laughs> unless I unless I see something or, or there's something unless there's something that tells me not to do that. Yeah. It's really tempting to do that, man. I guess no more guess the lines. Oh, yeah, my bad. Okay. We we can actually start at the top. We should bring this up. So this is one of my plays for tomorrow. Tiafo is plus one fifty to win the third set. That over thirty and a half is basically plus one fifty to win the third set. Because the only way that he doesn't is if it goes. Actually, it would be impossible now. So if if no, it wouldn't be. The only way that Tiafo could win the third set and lose and that over thirty and a half not hit is if it's two six three six 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 one six zero. And like that's just so unlikely as a score line. Like I don't even want to pay the ten cents. So I have T. I'm, I'm calling it Tiafo in the third set. I have the over thirty and a half at plus one fifty. I like that. It's a new day, right? Like, and it's basically two all. I think it's thirty love to be that oh, game. Also, Tiafo is going to come out the more de- desperate player, right? Like Dimitrov. Hopefully. When you're up two sets, you you know you tend to relax a little bit. Like Tiafo is going to come out and be way more desperate tomorrow. Like his energy is going to be up. Um, I actually have plus six fifty to win the match too. Okay, I, I like the. T- I, I, it's it's. I think the plus. I don't like if the plus one fifty to win the set wasn't available. I would take the plus six fifty to win the match. Um, I'm going to take. I both. think the plus one. I'm going to take both. Okay. All right. Uh, next match tomorrow, uh, Sinner and Galan. So Sinner is a eight-game favorite, minus 3,300. Galan is plus 1,200. The over-under is 30. Um, you have a play here? I mean, I'm tempted to go Sinner here, but I'm going to stay away. These, these big spreads are tough, and Galan's like – I don't know. He, the line can probably get a set to seven five, and like I don't know, he can like he. I'm not saying he can cover the spread, uh, but like it's eight, like eight at minus one twenty five for me. It's just a little too much juice. Mm-hmm. And the over under is basically the same thing, so I don't have a play there. I love these props. There's really nothing. I mean, there was really not anything that was super appetizing to me. Center three zero is minus two forty. Ew. Um. I mean, Galan to win a set at plus one eighty. If you want to back Galan, is kind of appetizing. I'm not going to, but I think it's kind of appetizing. He's so underpowered in this matchup. Like, if you force me to play it, I'd probably still play it. Center minus the eight games, but like, ugh. Sinner to win first two service games to Lover 15. 
Yeah, I don't like that either. Hold the 15, man, even on grass. Yeah, Sinner is not the greatest server, you know? Like, I don't know. Somebody has him on their Aces team. So, <laughs> oh, by the way, the Hubie Djokovic match, that's, uh, there are first two, two picks, right? Yeah, I know. Going head to head. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, I'm gonna go minus eight, man. I get it. Gun to my head, I would do the same thing. I just don't want to lay minus 125 of juice, you know. But to me, it's close. Like, if it were seven and a half, I would be all over it. Like, to me, my line is like, is like eight at 105, like eight at minus 105 is where I would start playing this for center. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't hate it. How about center the lead 3-1 after four games in both sets at plus 475? <sighs> I gotta think about it. Maybe. 4-2 after six games in set one and two plus 500. I, I prefer the 3-1. Oh, I was like the 4-2 better. You get more, chance, more time four, to two. get the break. Yeah, that's true. I mean, unless you really think a double break is that much in the cards in six games. I actually do, honestly. Then you should go the 3-1. It depends on how much of a run. I mean, you're much more pro center on this match than I am. I think Galan – I'm not pro Galan, and I think you're making the right play, but I think Galan can make this a little more competitive. So if you if you really like center, under 18.5 is plus 135. I don't like those bets anymore. I'm done playing those. I've got burned too many times. Like we hit it with with uh, one manual, but like that that's you know he, he's Galan is at a higher level than that. Yeah, you know I just don't like that. It gives you absolutely no room for error. Like it could be four all in the first set, and you're sweating bullets, hoping that the under that that Galan doesn't like hold for five five four, and then like even if that works out for you. You still got to sweat out two more sets for just like barely plus money. Hell no. I'm done with that shit. <laughs> you understand? Like it was five. It was four, uh, four all against Schwartzman. Schwartzman served. He held easily. Right. But like, even if Sinner breaks and wins that set, you got to sweat that out two more times. It's a heavy, it's a sweaty bet, but like oh. he probably gets the you know the question is if you really believe in Sinner, does he get there enough? You know, I'd rather like, lay the games because like he could they could lose a set because if Sinner loses a set here, it's gonna be seven six, right? Or six seven five or yeah, no, I'm no mean, worse I, look, than I, no yeah. worse than six four, right? And you could still hit the eight if you get like a six one set. No, but you're getting minus. Yeah. That's why you're getting you're giving juice instead of getting juice, right? It's it's not that much, like. It's 50 cents difference. Which is pretty significant around that. Like juice is like 50 cents is more significant around the 100 than anywhere else. Just like mathematically. I hear you. Um, like 750 versus 800 is basically nothing, right? It's basically the same thing. It's, you know, whereas like 125 minus 125 plus 125 is pretty different. I, I'm I'm not on that match at all. I, I might look at that prop. The 3-1 right. prop is kind of appetizing, but that's, I'm not on this at all. All right, Rubla Bublik. Now, now we get into some some fun stuff. So, uh, Rublev is actually a half a game favorite, minus 120 on the money line, over under 41. This is interesting because this opened up as Bublik is being, I think, a pretty significant dog. It might have looked like as high as 150 or 130 or something like that. Yeah. And then it moved all the way back to basically a pick. And now it's kind of moved back the other way to where Rublev is a slight favorite again. Um, so, I don't know, man. Like, so in the turn in this tournament thus far, Bublix won forty percent of his return points. So has Rublev, but Bublix also held seventy five percent of his points. Rublev is at sixty eight, and Bublix played. Um, Bublix played Wolf. He played McDonald and Martyr, and he, and he played Martyrer. Rublev played Goffin, he played Karatsev, and he played Purcell. I think Bublik's had the harder draw besides Martyr. But Wolf and McDonald are... Oh, by far the better, best two players yeah. of that group on grass. Right. 
Kratz is a tough matchup for Rublev, but I mean, I still, you know, Rublev um, did beat Rublev in uh, Halle in the. But final. it was a three set match. But it actually was. Six, it was three, more three, six, lopsided six, than, than the score indicated. Like Bublik actually dominated that match. No. Um, I don't remember it that well. I may, I may not be able to watch it. I might have been doing something, but um, uh, I don't know. I mean, to me, I'm your play here. I'm all over Bublik money line. So I I'm I I agree with you. I went Bublik under 41. Uh, there, there's a there's a there's a there's a match special. I think it's plus 200. Bublik and under and the under parlayed together. Okay. Or no, uh 200. Bublik and under 43 and a half. It's an adjusted over under. Bublik and under 43 and a half. That's the one I like. We talked about how, how Bublik like breaks serve a fair amount. Mm-hmm. You know what? I like that too. You want to make that a play of the day? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's the only play I have tomorrow outside of the Tiafo play. Okay. But I like this one better. I like this one a lot. All right. Okay, my mind is basically Bublik minus a set and a half. But if you take Bublik minus a set, a set and a half, it's like plus 155. Um, here you got plus 200. Yeah, like unless you end up, I don't, I don't think there's going to be multiple tie breaks here. I can see Look, one tie break, but I don't think there's going to be multiple. What's the no tie break here? It's a pretty good line. You should look. I mean, I can't remember. I think, I think you missed. I think it was up further. Plus 250. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Like, Bublik didn't play a lot of tie breaks in Queens, but he's played a tie break in two of the three matches here. He lost one to McDonald and he beat Wolf in a tie break, right? Right. Yeah. And did he play a tie break against Martyr also? Yeah, one. That's true. He does so, play. so he's played tie breaks in all three yeah, matches. Yeah, when it's best of five, it's a little bit different. I also think that was a little bit of an outlier, like in um in like like these guys aren't like with how well Bublik's playing right now, there's not a huge like well, I think Bublik's the better player, but I don't think it's a massive gap right now. So yeah, I'm all over Bublik here, man. And it's a nice way to hedge on my uh it's a slight hedge on my um Rublev to make the finals futures at 50 to 1. I actually cashed out of my uh Rublev to make the quarterfinals at plus 300. So what did you get for cashing out? Plus 150. Okay. But I cashed out because he's playing Bublik and I'm not confident in, in Rublev. No, I think that makes sense. So I think that makes sense. I want that plus 150 and then <coughs> play Bublik here. Yeah. Um, but like I was hoping it would, like to cash that, I was hoping it wouldn't be Bublik, right? Because I think he would have beaten anyone else. Yeah, I yeah. agree. So I agree. Um, I I like that play the most out of everything. Like I've gone through these lines, like that's my favorite by far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I actually think if it goes over 43, that's advantage Rublev. Right? Because that's when fitness comes into play. That's when like mental strength and all that like in key moments like that's when that comes into play right if yeah goes- I, I think i think if this goes five Bublik's in trouble like mm-hmm. who loves intensity is like one of the things he does well um and i think if this gets to a fifth like unless Bublik decides to tank a set or something like i think he's just in trouble i think it's just like it's just gonna be too much for him yeah so i think if you play you have to play Bublik and the under yeah um, what i actually kind of want to do is play this as well. Rublev to win and over 37 and a half and hedge. Do you like that idea? I think. Like maybe go two units on the Bublik to win and under 
and then go like one unit on the Rublev and over. The problem is you could lose both, right? If 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 it's like if it's Rublev easy money, you could you you could lose both. Like if Rublev wins in straights, if Rublev just doesn't show up and clowns the way the match, you're done. And like, and you lose both. Lose both, yeah. But like Bublik hasn't clowned in a while. It's been a while since he he's hasn't. It's been a while. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like I don't. I mean, I guess Bublik can clown at any time. But is he really going to clown the fourth round of a slam? Like, yeah. it's just if it goes over, that's advantage Rublev. So I really want. Oh, I completely. To... I get the logic completely. The logic makes complete sense to me. I just um, yeah, I buy. I buy into the logic. You know what? I'm just. Gonna... I just don't love Rublev here. You know, is the problem. Like, so I think. I think like I don't know. But I like playing this parlay because, like, you basically you needed to go over first and foremost, and then you need Rublev to win, right? But like, worry about the over first. I mean, the other way you're screwed is if it somehow is if you have four long sets, then you lose both too. Like, if Rublev wins in like four somewhat long sets. You could get like there's there's enough ways you could lose both. It's not really it's not a full hedge. It's a partial hedge. Partial hedge, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm gonna stick with just the one. The one. The, the I'll stick with just the one too. I, I don't like having conflicting rooting interest either. So, and you know what? I think I'm just gonna play Bublik money line too. Just just in case. I get it. I get it. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. That's that's gonna be a fun match to talk about on the spaces. Yeah. It's going to be really fun. Um, And then the other match, the last match here is Safulin versus Shapo. Shapo is giving two and a half to Safulin, minus 155 on the money, or yeah, minus 155 on the money line, plus 130 for Roman. Over under is 40 and a half. You have a play here? If I was a book, this is exactly how I'd set this match. I would probably go Shapo minus two, actually. So I I would probably like like gun to my head I would probably take 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 uh, Roman but these guys are both so erratic man I just and I think Shepo is I mean Shepo is the better player but these guys are both so erratic like I just don't really do uh do you like the under here no because like the thing is like both I I think this is really well set. Like I can, I can see there being one seven five or one seven six set, and then if there is, then you probably need, you probably then need um, it it to, uh, like so seven six, seven six six four six four six three, is mm-hmm. like forty two, which I think is probably like in my mind like the most likely, but it's so damn close, man. Again, like with these two guys, I just don't want like. Like these are two guys who I just like I have a hard time betting because like they're both so erratic. Hard, yeah. What about five sets? No five set line. Well, they don't have it. That's weird. Hmm. Do they have the set score? You can take one of the guys. Three. Two. No, I don't like that. I want to just take five sets. Okay. So I don't really have a read on it. Like, yeah. I mean, let me see. It's probably close to like, it's probably plus two something again. Your standard plus, it might be, it might be closer to plus, it might be like plus 280 or something. To me, that's the play. I mean, if you're going to take something here, I want plus money, but I don't know, man. No, well, five sets because both guys are very erratic, right? There's going to be some momentum swings. It's going to go at least four, right? How does this match go straight sets? I tend to agree with you. Like, Chapo couldn't go straight sets against... Brody and Radu Albot. Yeah, I just don't see like it's probably a good play. I just would have preferred five in like the and, and like yeah, I don't know, man. I just if 
Five sets is plus 200. That's just yeah, good yeah. enough. That's terrible. Terrible? I mean, that's like, it, it, like, too, like, that's less than if you're just pure, if each set is a pure coin flip. So if each set is a pure coin flip, you, you'd be getting like plus 170. And that's assuming that the sets are completely independent of each other and they're completely pure, pure coin flips. Yeah, you might be right. I don't know, man. These guys, I think I'm just going to stay away. These guys are so erratic, both these guys. Like, I just have no interest in betting this. I want to play something so bad here. Chapeau to win and both players to win a set at plus 140. No, I'd, I'd rather just take either the 3 1 or the 3 2. Total breaks is at five and a half here. It's a juiced five and a half, though. Yeah. Chapeau over three and a half breaks is plus 100. That I like. I'm not going to hit it with you, but like that, if I were you, I would hit that. It's better than anything else yeah, you're because, about. because I think it's going to be a long match. And I Roman think it'll be more than three sets. Well. What? Roman doesn't serve that well. Um, He's okay. He's been better this week, right? Like, he's like, it's tough too because Roman's playing so much better this week than he has his entire career. Mm hmm. But like, is is this the new Roman Safulin? Or is this just like he happened to play a couple of good matches, you know, and now he's gonna come back and be like the old Roman? Yeah. Over 15 doubles is plus 125. That's probably the play. <laughs> <laughs> How many doubles did Chapo have in his last match? Well, Safulin had eight against Mute, and that was three sets. Now, granted, he only had one against Pella, and he only had and he had nine against Agut and five. Okay. But like, but man, I think Chapo good for at least five himself. And then Chapo, that's a great call, man. Chapo is always good for some dubs. Always, always good for some dubs. <laughs> Fourteen against Brody. Oh, Jesus Christ! Yeah, he, he he almost got the but only three himself. against Rare. And seven against Albot. I mean, 15, you said? 15 combined. Oh, man. It's I'm hitting that. We're we're going to be it's on the Twitter spaces rooting for double vaults. They can't get all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. All right. You got to tell me on this one. I'm not. I'm not. But that's. Oh, come that's, on. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I have a bootleg play, man. I have a bootleg play to root for. Like I said, I got something to root for on the Twitter spaces. <laughs> And I mean, I got Tiafo. That's two things. Okay, fine. 15 plus doubles. Combined. I'm not going to hit the over. Uh, over but it's a fun, like, it's a fun creative way of playing the over. Because I think that's basically what it is, to be honest. Yeah, it's plus 125. I get plus money for 15 combined doubles for both guys. If it goes five sets, that's hitting. There's no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it's a I'm... it's a fun way. I mean, especially playing the over. It's a fun way of playing the over. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. I mean, that's that's what you get for a match that that you know are two really erratic guys where you see no value anywhere else. You just hit the doubles. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's tough because, like, yeah, to your point, like, it's so. I mean, actually, you know what? What is the three either guy? What What is the um? Can you go back to the specials? There is there like a lead lead three one or a lead four two special in the first each of the first two sets? Those are kind of appetizing, man. Plus eighteen hundred. 
Just because, like, with how erratic these guys both are, like, there could be early breaks. And, like, if, if you just happen to get lucky and one and the same guy gets the early break twice, you hit that. That's what I'm going to be looking at is one of those. I'll, I'll, I'm not sure about that yet, but I'll, I'm looking at one of those, man. One of those, one of those. Uh, okay. Because, yeah. like, if I'm going to play this match, I want it to be something big plus money. Because these guys are so erratic, and I want it to be, like, the erratic could be good thing, you know? It's kind of yeah. like playing them as underdogs, like, you know, like if it's gonna I, be, I got you. Yeah, I got you because you you feel like really anything can happen in this match. So if exactly, you... so like I may as well take something weird and take it at plus money because like anything could happen. Right. I mean, I can also go over twenty doubles and get plus five fifty. That's so fun. That's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I think I'm going to do that. All right. Over 20 doubles plus 550. That is a fun, fun one. That's really fun. If you're going for doubles, you, you better go big. Don't, 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 don't yeah. sell yourself short. Yeah. You know. For real. All right. Next match we got is uh, Alcaraz and Berrettini. Very interesting match. Alcaraz is a four game favorite. Minus 250 on the money line. Over under is 41 and a half. Wow, they're really giving Berrettini some respect here. Um, I'm on the Charlie side here. The Carlitos. What about you? I'm on the Berrettini side. Um, wow. I'm going to go, well, sort of. I like the over 41 and a half. If Berrettini can steal a set, which he might be good for, just again with like just just like basically as a pure serve bot, kind of like how Jari did today. Um, if he can steal a set, and if he can get another set to a tiebreak, or it's like a seven-five, that would be 25 games. And you need the other two to have more than 16 and a half total to hit this. If I'm gonna play it, I'm not sure yet, but if I'm gonna play it, that's how. But I'm not I'm not determined yet, but if I'm gonna play it, that's how. Because I think this spread is pretty right, man. I think four games is the right spread here. Well, what what was the spread against Yari? Like six or something. Five and a half, six, something like that. And he won by seven. But I think Berrettini's a better serve bot than Yari. I would agree with that. It's just like you also spewed out all those uh, return stats for Berrettini, which was not good. Oh, I'm not even. I'm not even thinking. Can Berrettini break? Like this is purely right. But what I'm there's saying a little is, bit of hope. There's a little hope that Alcaraz, like, because Al Alcaraz also has like the Alcaraz dip we've talked about, right? Like Alcaraz will probably hand Berrettini a break just because like he'll play a crap game because he always does, and then. Um, and I'm hoping for Berrettini to like, you know, steal a steal a tie break, steal a set in a tie break. Right, but what I'm saying is that if if Alcaraz can steal a break in these sets, the chances that Berrettini break are quite low, right? So like that's if you get a six three set, and then the set that Berrettini wins is seven six, you just need two of those, and that's that's there's your four. So I like laying the four games. Because like I feel like Alcaraz is going to break once or twice. I think you need him to break, but you probably need him to break. If Berrettini steals a set, you're going to need him to break at least twice, if not three times. To cover the four. Which I think is possible because he's able to expose the the... the weakness on the backhand for Berrettini more than can he get enough serves back in, in good positions to on grass against Berrettini to actually set up points I feel like the fact that he played Yari in the previous round gave him some like reps and ideas of how to attack a big server I don't know man we're talking about this in the past like, like one of the big I, I think one of the big and you don't really agree with me on this and this is this is kind of an interesting take on this match I'm sure you're not going to agree 
But I think one of like Carlos's weakness is still tactics sometimes. Yeah. So I don't know, man. Like, and I'm not saying I think Bertine's gonna win, right? I'm I'm just saying I think four is like a pretty good spread here. Um. So like the, my like I'm thinking under, the over under on Berrettini break props is one and a half at minus one twenty. You get it mi- minus one twenty either way. Well, I think I think he'll break. I think Berrettini will break once. I probably won't take it because I think that's probably the right way to to think that that that's the right prop there on Berrettini. But I, I I do think Berrettini will find one break. So Alcaraz over two and a half is minus one fifty. Under two and a half is plus one ten. I mean, so so what they're telling you there is it's probably going to be like three to one in breaks, maybe three to two, right. which puts you right around that four in the spread. The game right here is going to be tricky, man, because there's also going to be tie breaks and serve orders going to matter, like. Yeah, serve order. That is true. I just, you know, like, okay, against Verev, I, 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 I'll give you Berrettini. Against Alcaraz, not really. I, I don't. I feel like Alcaraz will find some, some hole. I agree the tactics need to get better, but. He's also way more mentally strong than 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 Zverev. Like we could agree, well, you know. Yeah, I'm not saying again. Like that's why. Like there's no way I'm betting Berrettini to win this match. I think plus two hundred is a, is a gift to Berrettini here in terms of like winning the match. But um, how about Alcaraz three one at plus two seventy? It's appetizing. It's appetizing. I might go for that. I might go for that and for the over. Um, I still like the over, man. Like, uh, yeah, playing Alcaraz on the overs here is not a bad bad look. I mean, I yeah. I liked it with Yari at thirty four. <laughs> Forty one and a half is a little bit more difficult to uh, to pounce on. Yeah. I like the minus four. I I think it's a but little Yari, so low. Yari and Alcaraz went forty three today. For reference, right? But one of the sets was seven six. One of them was seven five. Well, that's what I think. I mean, that's that's what that's what I'm hoping for. I want two. I want two long sets to get split, and then I just need Alcaraz to win two six three or six four sets, and I'm good. Right? I get the forty three or forty four. I just I like the minus four because if Alcrest can squeeze out one six three in there, it should cover. Yeah, but he's got to break. He's got to have the right serve order to make that happen, right? Probably because I, I don't know if he's going to break Berrettini twice in a set. He could. I mean, Berrettini could end up tanking a set if he get if you know if he's getting gassed out. I mean. He, you know, Carlos yeah. gassed it, a lot of guys out. I, you know, it's definitely minus out. four. I prefer that side than the plus four. I think that's how I'm going to hit it. Minus four and the three one. That's what okay. I'm going to play. I might tell you, on, I'm probably going to tell you on the three one. Um, okay. I also like the over 41 and a half here. Okay. It's a bit high for me. Good job. Bit high for me, but it's ooh popcorn tennis baby. Chris Eubanks against Sissy Pass. Uh, so, go yeah, ahead. you got to play here. Uh, well, let me go go over the lines. It's three and a half games each way. Uh, plus two sixty for Eubanks, minus three twenty five for Sissy Pass. The over under is forty three. I would prefer a little bit more, but I, I'm very tempted to hit the Eubanks money line plus 260. I don't think it's a bad look. I'm gonna go more conservative. You're not gonna like this one at all. The plus three and a half? Nope. I'm going the over 43. How does either of these guys break the other? 
These are two serve. I mean, basically, at this point, Tsitsipas is a serve bot, and so is Eubanks. Like, if this goes four sets, like, I mean, right. like, I, I, like this, like, neither of these guys getting two breaks in a set, and neither of these guys is like, I, I don't like, I just don't see many breaks for. I don't see many breaks at all in this match. I see like, like I see like like under like I see under three break, breaks total. I'm waiting for the line to come out for multiple tie breaks. I'm going to hit that. I want the, I like the first set tie break money line. The first set tie break line is plus 125. I like that. I already hit that. Like, <laughs> well, okay. So if you think that each set is a coin flip, pretty much, because they're going to tie breaks, why, why not hit the Eubanks money line? Thinking about it, I mean, I, I haven't made a decision there yet. I think it's, uh, like, I don't think they're exactly. Like coin flips, I think probably sits a pass is like 55% likely to win a set. Um, I don't mind the overlook here for that reason, what you're saying, but I'd rather play the tie breaks in each set than play the the over 43. Like, I know FanDuel usually has that uh, over one and a half set tie break prop. Let me see what that is. Oh, Bovada will have it up too. You just need to wait until it gets closer to match time. Wait, I don't like waiting. The first set tiebreak line here on Bovada is plus one twenty five. I'm already on that. What? They don't have it yet. Huh, they don't have it yet. Interesting. Oh, total tie breaks in the match. Plus three. Uh, so it's minus 120 for over one and a half tie breaks. That's insane. That may not be worth hitting at that point, man. I was hoping to get some kind of plus money, but like I that may I, I may not be able to hit that. That's insane. Over two and a half tie breaks is plus three fifty. That I might hit that. Like honestly, like it's it's like how does like neither of these guys is breaking the other one? Like this could end up seven six seven six seven six, just like the Eubanks O'Connell match did. Over four and a half tie breaks is only twenty five to one, which is insane. Seven six six seven seven six six seven seven six. Yeah, which is insane. I can't hit that. But like, wow. I like the. <clears throat> you know what? For over one and a half tie breaks at minus one twenty, I think that's pretty good. That's still pretty good. Yeah, I'm hoping Bovada gives a better line just because it's like, but they probably won't. Do you like that more than the forty three? Because it's basically the same price. Um, no, because the 43 gives, well, got to think about it. I mean, that's tough because like, so the 43 gives me an out for a five set, right? A five setter is getting to 43 every time. No doubt. Mm-hmm. The, the one that the bet that you have there, the over one and a half tie breaks gives you an out for a straight setter with two tie breaks. So it's close. I don't really have a preference either way. Yeah. I like the over one and a half tie breaks slightly better. How about this is probably a plus EV play. Sissy pass under two and a half breaks at minus 175. It's 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 boring with the mon- with like you know the the line, but don't you think that's a plus EV play? I think it is. I think it is. You probably should hit that. I mean, how again, how is these guys gonna break the other? Like that they'll just keep asking that question over and over again until the end of time. Like 
it's crazy that Eubanks to break is better. It's minus 188, whereas QB to break is, is like lower. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it's, it's, I think to me, it's Eubanks money line and like the over in some capacity. That's the way I'm looking at this match. Yeah. I got to look at the Eubanks money line, but it's definitely in my, uh, in my cards. And I'm probably, I'm probably going to take that too. Because it's a, it's a really good like matchup wise, stylistically, like Eubanks has the game to hurt Sissy Pass, right? That big serve. He can like, Pin that I just pin. I just think like I, I have a slightly different take. I think it's like I don't I don't like I don't think either is going to break the other. So it's going to come down to like it's it's going to come truly down to like one or two points here and there. And like I think Sitsipas is should be a favorite because he's just like a he's like he's got a much more I mean, like refined like he actually has a way better backhand than like this, this is the one time you can actually say this is has has the backhand. Yeah, advantage. you're probably right. You're right. Um, but like yeah, man, it's it's. But it's gonna come down to such few points, like that I I um that yeah, I think it's just yeah. gonna be like I'll probably end up paying the Eubanks money on just because I think like it's a it's plus money, you know, and like it's 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 like there's value on it, and like this could go like Eubanks could win this like six this could end up being six, seven, six, four, six, seven, six, seven for Eubanks. I know. I know. Where he's like the worst player and wins some tie breaks and gets lucky, you know? Like well, Sissy Pass likes playing guys like Schwartzman or Radu Albot or that those kind of guys where he can like be aggressive, take initiative. Like Eubanks is not the guy he wants to play. Play serve big, first strike tennis. Pin no, but big. I don't think it's that bad either because he's not going to be under a lot of pressure. What do you mean? I mean, I actually think he's going to be under quite a bit of pressure. But it's he not. Does- it's going to be like. Well, not on his service games, right? Not on his service games, but he feels less pressure when he plays guys like Schwartzman, for example, who can't really attack, and they they're more like counter punchers. He doesn't yeah, like guys just take the first strike situation, away from him because, like, usually it's like a like with more um like. With more, I don't know, call it like refined guys, right? Like, like, like it's like a weird spot where it's like, okay, like he knows he's in trouble because of the backhand, and like he knows he can't, like he doesn't have a way to attack. He was playing like Alcaraz, right? Like, it's like, what does he do against a guy like Alcaraz, right? With Eubanks, it's the same thing, but he knows Eubanks is just gonna miss all over the place too. So it's like it's not as disconcerting. Whereas Alcaraz isn't gonna miss, or he'll go through periods where he won't miss, and you're screwed. I, I'm just saying, like, okay, yeah, missing is one thing, but just like stylistically, Sissy Pass hates guys that take that first strike away from him because Sissy Pass loves get, getting that first strike. Like, that's why he, he actually matched up pretty well against Murray because Murray is a counter puncher by nature, right? So Sissy Pass can get that first strike. I 100% out. agree with your take. I just think this is, I like, I hear your take. Uh-huh. I just think with the guy who's like missing, who's going to miss as much as he banks is going to miss, it's different, right? Okay. It has no backhand and like, like it's, it's like, like this is like, like at some point, like you can't compare Eubanks to like other first strike guys. Okay. Okay. That's. All right, yeah, I, I I'm really, really, really looking forward to that match, though. Like, I think it it's oh, it's, I think it's gonna be an eye sort of a match. It's gonna look like Eubanks Harris did. Like, it's gonna it, be it's awful. gonna look terrible, but it's just like intriguing to watch. It's intriguing. It's intriguing. It's intriguing. I'll give you that. I think I think intriguing is the right word. I'm not that excited for, it, but it's intriguing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, a last match: uh, Medvedev against Lechka. Uh, Medvedev is a five and a half game favorite, minus three seventy five on the money line. Lechka's plus two ninety. Over under is thirty eight. If so, I was the book, I would set this money line at minus one and a half and have it be minus one fifteen for both guys. So I, I'm gonna stay away. <laughs> like I truly, like I truly do feel like Let's kicking at a set here, but like you know, it's it's like 
I think this is a bad matchup for Lechka, though. But I still think you take a set. Like, I think Fusovic was a bad matchup for... I think I think this was a bad matchup for... I think Fusovic was a bad match. Med, Med was a bad matchup for Fusovic, too, and he still took a set. Like, like I think Lechka just has enough game to take a set, and then, like, you probably get to five and a half, you know? Yeah, it's actually priced very, very similarly to the the, the Fushovic match. And the books hit the Fushovic match completely right. Like, I think this is like, like this is literally like, like I, I like so basically I play guest lines myself when I'm looking at the lines. Yeah. To figure out like if I should play something or not, and like I, I and I said literally if I was the book and I was trying to get this right, I would handicap it at five and a half and I would do each guy at minus one fifteen. Like I was like I'm never right on with it, and like this time I was. I have no play here. I mean, Medvedev over 20 and a half at plus 105 is kind of fun if he drops a set. That looks fun, yeah. Medvedev 3-1 plus 250. Uh, I, I don't like that. I think the Fusevitz match was actually, would actually be in a better play effect. I think it was like, there was like, like there's a little, like, like Lechka can play good and he can play bad, you know? True. Like we've seen him throw some really bad matches in. True, whereas Fusevic, you kind of know what you're getting. I also don't know, like, so with Lechka, right? Like, how much of this run here is Lechka, and how much of it is luck? Because like, he got a tired Sarundalo, and he got a potentially injured Tommy Paul. It's a good call. It's a good call. Um, yeah, but also Medvedev, like, is he is he gaining? comfort on grass no with this run or it, it, i feel I like his grass so. stock hasn't like moved i don't think it should have because he keeps doing exactly what we say he's gonna do right you know what i mean like it's not i mean like beating fusivis in four sets is nice it's not like that impressive for a guy ranked number two in the world i actually cashed out of that bet too i had medvedev to lose in the third round and i cashed that out with with a slight loss, yeah. I just saw no like I I got maybe like half a unit back, yeah. But like, I just saw no, saw no way for him to lose to uh, to Fushevik. I hear you. you know, I was getting nervous after the first set, but it's like, yeah, Fushevik is just nothing to like really hurt Medvedev like long term in that match. All right, we have a day to think about this. I'm leaning towards the Medvedev over 20. Yeah, I like that. That's what I'm leaning. But like it. I'm gonna think about it. Let, let's go to the futures market here. So um Djokovic is now minus 200 to win the title. Alcaraz plus 350. He hasn't moved at all, Alcaraz. There's been no move on that. That's the exact yeah. line it was pre-tournament. Center plus 1200, Medvedev plus 1400, Sissi plus 2200, Maritini 25. I mean, I don't really see anything here, man. What about Bublik at 80 to 1, man? That's that's the one I see that stands out to me. He could win. He could be anybody. He only needs to win four matches. The thing which worries about me is like if one of these matches gets really physical, then it, it becomes a problem. I'm not saying I think Bublik is gonna win it's, this tournament. Yeah, it's eighty to one. It's eighty to one. Like it's it's interesting. Oh man, I wish he wasn't in the Novak section. I wish he was in the center section. I don't think it matters, though, man. He's the only guy who can take Djokovic out anyway. You think it's, him out at some point. You think it's good that he plays Novak earlier? I don't think it matters. Like, I think, like, who else is taking out Novak besides Alcaraz? Maybe. Do you who do you who do you think has a better shot at beating at uh, Novak, Alcaraz or Bublik? Alcaraz. 
Slightly, or it's a pretty big gap. Slightly, slightly. I mean, there, there's somewhat of a gap, right? Like, like Alcaraz could could can actually rally with Djokovic and have some success. You know, Bublik can't. Like, Bublik would just have to play his ass off. It would, be, it would have to be like the, that Vavrinko at the French Open kind of stuff, right? Except probably even a little bit, like even a little more like crazy, you know? Like, yeah, he just comes out and plays like. Actually, it would be it would be more like Curios, but like meant stays mentally awake for four sets, you know. But like, but man, I don't know. Like, if you give me like seven or eight to one on Bublik versus Djokovic, you got to take that, right? I need I need ten to one, nine to one. It's interesting. It's interesting. But that's what, the only other thing I see here. What's ten to win this quarter? 12 to 1 now. 11 to 1. I, I prefer the outright. One, yeah. Prefer the outright then. I way prefer the outright. If he if he can beat Djokovic, man, like he can beat anyone, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And he's not going to be clowning them in the semifinal, or he better not. Yeah. You know, Medvedev there at even money to win the quarter looks good to me. Both of those, if he if he beats Lechka, both of those matchups in the quarters are disastrous for the guys that are playing there. Medvedev's the hardest guy to ace on the tour. True, true. Like if Medvedev plays Eubanks, Eubanks has no shot. True. I mean, Eubanks has a shot because there's a shot against anybody, but it's very small. Well, you did get the seven five in Miami. <laughs> they never have slept for, through the first set. <laughs> it was kind of early. It was in like it wasn't like a one p.m. Yeah, match. it was like a twelve o'clock match. Yeah, it's, it's Miami. He was up late at the club. Like he was into club. Like <laughs> there, and he won, so we forgive him for it. Mm. But no, I, I think I might. I mean, I might play that. That looks really tasty, man. The even money. Yeah, I mean, look how much money. Look, look how much like the books are giving sits of past respect still. Yeah, yeah, the books still give sits of some respect. That's for sure. Yeah. Do you like Medvedev to reach the final at plus four hundred? No, because if he plays out, no, it's bad no, match. no, so you have to beat. Uh... Who did who did he beat? No, uh, Alcaraz, Berrettini, Holger Rune, well, Dimitrov. Berrettini, Berrettini would be a good matchup for him. Alcaraz would be a disaster. It would, and it's probably Alcaraz. So no, um, you know, honestly, yeah. I mean, I was gonna say Sinner at six to one, but he has to be Djokovic, and he's that's gonna be tough for him to do. So no thanks. Yeah, I mean, my my play here would be. Uh, I'm so Bublik tempted. To to like, like, why is Bublik eighty and Berrettini twenty five? It's probably why is Bublik is eighty and, and that... Dimitrov fifty? Why is Bublik eighty and Rublev sixty six or Rune sixty six? Like, that I agree with you. The only other guy who can win this tournament besides Djokovic and Alcaraz and maybe Sinner is Bublik. Yeah. I mean, I, I think some of it might be due, due to the fact that, like, Berrettini's on the other side of the draw. But maybe not, not. because the book at, at minus 200, they're, they're basically banking on Djokovic making the final. Like, and, like, my, my other piece is that, like... Make the final is minus 500, which is insane. And my other piece with it is, like... Like, I don't think it matters. Like, who on Djokovic's side... To, you, to the point we just said, like, who else is knocking Djokovic out? No, you like, named Bublik, the guys. Gonna, what? You named the guys. It's Bublik, Alcaraz, and I think Sinner is on the And, like, maybe Sinner. He's, like, list. the edge. Yeah, he's on the edge of that list. Yeah, nobody else. Right. Yeah, I mean... I actually think but, it's I think it's good that he would play Bublik in the quarters because like say if he was on the other side and had to play um 
Alcaraz or Medvedev, and that was like a five, you know, five set, three and a half, four hour match. Like, I don't really trust for him to kind of get up and like play another physical match. It's also like we've never, and like we were guessing on Bublik's personality, but we've never seen him play like a match of that magnitude, right? Right. I, I, I guess it's the only other this is his first round of sixteen ever in a in a, in a slam. Right. Mark. I mean, is like what's the best he's ever even done in a Masters? I think he's made semis before, quarters or semis. Because like a round of sixteen in a slam is kind of like a Masters quarter. I think he made one in like Miami once. Okay. But yeah. I mean, because we're we're getting close to like biggest match of your life, right? Like, right. I th- I think if he plays in a, if he makes the quarters, I think that becomes the biggest match of of Bublik's life that he's ever played. Mm-hmm. No, for sure, for sure. Are you going to hit that eighty to one? Thinking about it, I'm tempted, man. Like. If he beats Rublev, what's that price going to go down to? 40? 50? Probably, yeah. Probably 40. Yeah. But maybe not, because like... It's Djokovic the next round. Yeah. You can't... They take these lines down um, mid-match, right? Yeah. Or like, or like when the round starts. Yeah, they go down, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so tempting though, man. That 80 on Bublik. I might hit that. I gotta think about it. Okay. All right. So the problem is like you just know you're throwing your money away, you know? Because like, like it's, it's it's not gonna hit. Uh, like he's not being joking. Yeah. But, like I got you. All right. Let's uh plays of the day. So for tomorrow, it's definitely the Bublik and under 43 and a half parlay. Yep, for sure. Plus 200. There's no doubt about sure. that. Um for the following day, you want to just do the Eubank Sissy Pass overplay? Oh, it's up to 44 oh. now? Ooh. I guess they, they 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 were listening to the podcast before it was even recorded. Well, I'm glad somebody's listening. <laughs> um just we don't want Bovada to be listening. I already have it at 43, so I'm not gonna, wow. but like I still think at 44 it's still as good. That might be the highest over under in the tournament. I, I but it I should be. Still, yeah, it should be. I still lean over there. Yeah, I'll do it. Let's do it. Let's 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 do that as our play today. Over forty four. Uh, I prefer well, especially at forty four. I prefer the tie break play. The over one and a half tie breaks. That's the play I prefer too. Yeah, let, let's do that instead. All right. So since you don't have, I'll I'll yeah, I got you. I'll place it. Yeah. So. All right, we'll do that. Um. And then the other matches, Medvedev, Lechka, I know you're staying away. I'm leaning towards the over 20 for Medvedev, but I'm still yeah. thinking about that. Alcaraz, Berrettini, I'm going with a minus four for Alcaraz. You're going with the over? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then I'm going with Alcaraz 3 1. No, I'm going to tell you on the Alcaraz 3 1. You want to do that as a play of the day tomorrow, too? No. Okay. You prefer the, the over. All right. Yeah. Uh, Hubie and Djokovic. We're both on the plus 6.5 for heel. Although that line keeps moving, damn it. Um, yeah, it's minus one. Oh, no, I, mean, I think here I'm considering the first at tie break. Right. At 550. I'm playing the plus two and a half sets, the plus six and a half, and the tie break in the first set. Yeah. Um. Center Galan, you're staying away. I'm doing minus eight. Yep. Uh, Rubla Bublik. We already we talked about that. Talked play about that. Safalunin, Shapo, you're staying That's away. Dead I'm stay doing... away from me. I, I have no interest in that match at all. I'm oh, doing... no, I was saying I, I am looking at the um those three, three ones, ones right? twos, like plus okay. fifteen. And I'm doing the over twenty double fall prop. Yeah. That's awesome. We have some fun ways of hitting that one if we're actually hitting it up in the spaces <laughs> tomorrow. So yeah. And then so we'll have a Twitter spaces tomorrow. Manny and I will be on. Um I may not be on for long. Um, but I have I have a tennis match in the midday, so but I don't know if it's gonna happen or not. It's supposed to rain, so let's see. Okay. Pray for rain. I would rather watch tennis. <laughs> also, we just got texted. I'm playing singles, and one of the singles matches 
is being postponed. Oh my but he God. hasn't decided which one yet. Well, if it rains, both are going to be postponed and the, the spaces will go on. So my point is like there's a three out of four chance it's going to be a long regular spaces. Okay. All right. Sounds yeah. good. But we'll be on starting at what? Eight o'clock? Yeah, eight, eight thirty, something like that. I'm not going to like get up super early for it, but yeah. All right. Sounds like, good. All right, guys. Have a, have a good night. And uh, Hey, again, guys, everybody. Thanks to the Discord yep. people, people on the Discord. Great chat. Love it. Um, thanks to all the listeners on the pod. It's starting to pick up. We were talking about it, man. We're, I think we're pre-pod. It's starting to get to like 40, 50 views. Um, so if, like, and we're getting some comments, getting a lot of, uh, comments on my, my loud mouth, um, getting some comments on, uh, us being curious haters. So, uh, I love not as much of a curious hater as Manny. Um, but, uh, uh but yeah, but we love, we love the chat. Though. And please, uh, comments are great. You know, so far, I think all the comments have been really good. There hasn't been any, like any, like just silly, stupid comments. It's been like really interesting comments and fun chatter. So really happy about that. Yep. All right, guys, we'll see. We'll see you on the spaces. All right. Bye everyone. Peace out. Peace out. See ya.